Hi, welcome everyone to uh, Level 1 Adventuring. It is a pleasure to be back again with all of you lovely folks uh, back on the channel. Uh, I am your humble Dungeon Master and host, Wolf Scott. I will be running our campaign tonight, which is uh, the Level 1 uh, homebrew campaign, The Shards of Chaos. Uh, you can learn more about this depth-defying quest on our Discord, uh, which should be linked down in the doobly-doo. Uh, as Matt Coville would say, uh, and as well as all of our other socials. Uh, if you want to uh, follow up on all of the previous episodes that you may have missed, uh, check them out on the YouTube for sure. Uh, and if you like what you see tonight, uh, you know, smash that like button. I think that's not a Twitch thing, is it? No, <laughs> but you can subscribe uh, and follow us because uh, everyone's only level two. So there's lots of adventure left to see for you to enjoy. Uh, and with that, I think I'm going to hand it over to my lovely party members and friends. Uh, Sydney, why don't you take it away? Oh, and I Hi should also, sorry, I should oh, yeah. also uh, prepare everybody's uh, uh, character picks. Uh, yeah, I think I have that ready. All right, now you can go. Oh, hi, I'm Sydney, <laughs> and I uh, play Viola Numa, a cleric on a mission to find her god. Throwing it over to you, Amber. Hey everyone, my name is Amber. I play Nadara Valier. Um, I am a half drow rogue, uh, kind of out for herself to, you know, take care of some loved ones back home. Hey everyone, my name is Lauren, and I'm playing Gray Eden, a uh, half orc druid, and I am on a quest to be reunited with my long lost family. Hmm. Passing it over to Zach. <laughs> And I am Zach, thank you, Lauren, uh, playing Zorvarax Verduk, our dragonborn fighter. Uh, he's just doing his favorite thing that he loves most of all, dungeon delving and fighting bad guys that are being unjust. Perfect. Uh, speaking of fighting unjust bad guys, <laughs> uh, I think this is the perfect opportunity for, uh, for a bit of a recap. How are we feeling, gang? Okay. Let's do it. Uh, so when we last left our intrepid heroes, uh, so our party, uh, if you've been following us for a while, has been traveling Hillendale to deliver this poor young squire in training, Percival Graham, uh, to an organization known as the Valiants. Oh, Joe's in the chat, says recap. Always excited to see <laughs> Joe in the chat. Um, to uh, this uh, knightly organization known as the Valiants, and in particular his uncle, who is a very prominent figure of this organization, after uh, a long trek, they finally made their way. Oh, and uh, Uzaki's here. Oh, wait, <laughs> that's you. Know, I always forget whose chat name is like the real name versus the wrong name. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, finally made their long trek over to Riverholm, which is this uh, new stretch of the province, which is uh, covered in a crisscrossing mismatch of waterways. It's a connection of bridges and stilted hutlands. Uh, stretching as far as the eye can see, uh, an overcast sort of wet uh, uh, swath of land which leads towards the Storm Coast. Um, as the party uh, figured out which waterway would be the correct one to follow to uh, hit Parel Channel, which is presumably where the Valiants would be camped out, uh, they unfortunately ran aground some, uh, some ne'er-do-wells, some, some miscreants, uh, as these masked figures appeared from the mists uh using a form of magic to root their uh their traveling cart in place and to make some veiled threats um they demanded that the party hand over this uh, apparently very important item that they've been they've been transporting as they could feel that it had a very powerful magical resonance um I believe it was Yoen, our, our resident wizard, who made some canny history checks and discovered that these figures were known as the Forsaken. Uh, the Forsaken are a group of once spell... Well, they're still currently spellcasters, but they were once sort of official trainee students of the local, uh, or I should say the preeminent, Arcane Academy in the Storm uh, on Stone Coast, uh, known as the Magisterium. But they, uh, either from their own reasons, either split or were dishonorably discharged and have become sort of uh, hedge mazes and rogue wizards uh, that sort of skulk the, the wetlands for, for prey, as it were. Um, the party, so basically these guys showed up, 
routed the party in place with magic, surrounded the cart, and was pretty much like, hand over whatever powerful magical thing you have in there, or shit's gonna get ugly. And as our party is wont to do, they said, actually, why don't you just listen to us talk for a little bit? <laughs> and through, uh, through some charm and some intimidation and some showmanship, as Yoen, uh, proudly displayed the, the fur shawl of Nuke the Houndmaster, the, the ogre menace which you had slain and draped across the, uh, the cart. You had convinced that the Forsaken, that perhaps they were biting off a bit more that they could chew, uh, and it would be wiser for them to stand down. And uh, the, the Forsaken, realizing this may be the case, uh, once again uh, uh, disappeared back into the mists and left the party alone. Allowed the party to cross the last half of their journey, uh, into Riverholm proper as they discovered uh, what appeared to be some valiant banners hanging from some tree branches, uh, which was definitely denoting the camp that had been set up nearby. And as they followed their way uh, into the camp, they were not met perhaps with the reception that they were hoping for. Uh, the camp itself seemed very sparsely defended, uh, not quite uh, armed as they were probably anticipating knowing the stories of the Valiants and their military might. Uh, and morale of the camp also seemed very low. Uh, everybody was sort of milling about, seeming a little off kilter, a little nervous. Um, Percy quickly got off the cart to intercept the guards that were approaching the caravan and said, oh, it's, it is I, Percival Graham. Uh, to which, uh, hearing Percival's voice, another figure strode out from sort of the uh, commanding tent at the center of camp. A, uh, a tall, broad, square-jawed uh, man with uh, flowing salt and pepper uh, hair and a, uh, a neatly trimmed beard with a the sort of a salt-weathered face. Um, with a battle-scarred armor, you could tell that this individual has seen his fair share of combat and uh, w with a steely gaze to, to add to his demeanor. Uh, marching forward was Theor Graham. Uh, the party knows Theor's name. Uh, Theor is Percival's uncle, uh, a storied valiant knight, and the individual to which the party was supposed to deliver this mysterious package to. Uh... Theor was nonplussed uh, about the party's arrival, uh, pretty much announcing that because they had dallied for so long, which the, the, they may or may not be aware because the party chased some gnolls, who knows, um, because the party had sort of dallied on their delivery, um, more and more of their soldiers that were guarding the camp have been disappearing night by night, slowly but surely, um, on patrols, they seem to be being systematically picked off. And, of course, Theor is pretty upset about this and very uh, worried for his uh, his men and women stationed at the camp. Uh, so the party, wanting to make good on their delivery, said, Hey, here's your weird box. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, are, we, are we done here? Uh, to which Theor also informed the party that the job is not done. And this is something Percival did not know about. Uh, Theo pretty much saying your job was to deliver your package to its intended destination. This is not the final stop. Uh, this is just a waypoint on that journey, uh, to which the party had some things to say, feeling a little duped, feeling a little had, uh, not wanting to overexert themselves, but Theo assured them that they would be in the good graces of the Valiants should they accompany, uh, him the rest of the way. And also, uh, you know, with that, with that, those thick, deep pockets, those valiant pockets, uh, started doling out some extra, uh, gold their way to promise them. Oh, what's up, Mochi? Subscribed again. Thank you so much, my friend. We, we love having you on stream with us. Uh, turned out those, those deep pockets and said, Hey, if you actually make good on the final end of this delivery, I'll even throw in this little advance, right? help everybody out to which the party had a hard time uh, disagreeing at that point, especially because Percival wanted to continue the journey with his uncle uh, and the party at least at some, at some point feels a little indebted to that, that, that strawny Weasley boy. Uh, so uh, Percival and Theor sort of, uh, well, I should say Theor commanded Percival to meet with him in the commander's tent to talk further valiant business and dismiss the party to their own devices uh, the party went to a uh, communal campfire to sort of talk about events, what is going on, this feels a little fishy, what's, you know, how, what, what are we going to do? And they were eventually um, 
talked to uh, by a half-elf valiant, an attendant by the name of Rios, uh, who everyone quickly nicknamed Ross. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rios slash Ross uh, pretty much gave uh, the party all the information that uh, Theor was not able to give on that initial meeting, pretty much saying that, hey... Yes, it's true. We're missing soldiers. They get sent on patrols, um, and we keep getting less and less back every night. It's becoming a real problem. We don't know if we're going to have enough people to man the boat. So that's another thing. You found out that the rest of the way of your journey is actually going to be handled on these like floating uh, river platforms. You're going to load the um, wagons onto some river platforms, these boats, and ship them down to Danarath. It's like, we don't, we don't even know if we're going to have the, the people to do these boats. It's a pretty big deal. Um, handed you the rest. I think handed you some items that um, Theor had um, requisitioned you from the Valiant store pile. Some healing potions and, a, and an oil of sharpness. Uh, lesser sharpness, I should say, to help with the, with the dangers ahead. Um, and said, you know, if there's anything else you need, let me know. Party said, you're cool. Everybody took a little nap. Uh, I believe Zorvrax tried uh, to, to pull a prank. <laughs> But was not sneaky enough. Uh, the party sort of had their chats throughout. What are you the talking about? He was so pranked. <laughs> he was, no idea. He's prunk he hard. So got him good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the party did eventually get their full night's rest. Uh, when, well, I should say, right before dawn broke, commotion broke out in the camp as some of the returning soldiers, surprise, surprise, ended up going missing. Uh, and they were not reported uh, returning to their post. So at this point, uh, Theo was like, all right, no time like the present. We have these mercenaries. We we can't lose any more, more souls. We're going to go and scout for them. So pretty much sent two parties, one on the th south shore of the river, one to the north shore of the river, to try and put an end to these, these disappearing uh, knights. Uh, the party had tried to... Uh, travel over the wetlands to try and discover what might be the cause. They're looking for footprints. They're looking for traps. Nothing that they could find. I think Musa D tried to use uh, speak with animals to talk to a frog, but the frog was not having it. Uh, pretty much shut down Musa D pretty hard. Um, so the party was unfortunately not able to find much useful information um, about what may be happening to these knights. However, they did discover uh, on the north side of the riverbank, there was a large bridge that was uh, a stone bridge that was uh, taking the one side of the bank over across the other side of Perel Channel. Uh, and Percy, full, f fully weathered, uh, decided to take a moment to, to breathe uh, and catch uh, catches, uh, his strength at the top of this bridge. And in so doing, something caught his eye in the, in the water, sort of twinkling at the water's edge. It appeared to be some sort of, uh, some object, some metallic object glistening beneath the, the break of the river. Uh, the party, obviously intrigued by what this may be, uh, some of them jumped in. I think it was, uh, Zorvarax and, and Theor, uh, maybe Violet at this point, I can't remember, uh, had jumped in bravely to see what was the matter. And when they finally, uh, swam down between all the muck and the kelp and the seaweed and, all that fun stuff, the gnarled branches. Uh, they found what appeared to be a breastplate uh, glistening in the water, a Valiant's breastplate, and an unfortunate corpse attached to it as the bloated, drowned body of Rios slash Ross uh, was found bobbing and tangled up in the kelp. Gasp! What could have done such a thing? Uh, and as the party was just getting their bearings, uh, uh, grabbing Rios's body and attempting to drag him to shore... Uh, something else decided to do some dragging of its own as Zorvarax and Theor were suddenly assaulted by uh, these large tendrils that seemed to be made out of a, a ropey green vine. Uh, started entangling their bodies. Uh, I believe the vine actually creeped up on Zorvarax's mouth, uh, pr uh, pried into his jaw, and hung his mouth open and started forcing him to, to swallow water and begin quickly drowning. As the party realized they were beset upon this mysterious beast, uh, this creature, which seems to be the shape and size of an entire horse, but its body is composed entirely of brambles, of vines, of seaweed, um, all sort of wrapped up over sort of a dark, shadowy, inky void, which all it has is glowing yellow spots for eyes sort of tangled up in that mess of, a, of an equine head uh, with tendrils lurching out all over its body and wrapping the, uh, the heroes. Quickly found out they were not alone, and they probably also discovered the, 
the reason why all of these knights were disappearing and a fight ensued uh there was a lot of hijinks happening this thing obviously can constrict people drag them underneath the water zorvarax has found out firsthand uh that if the creature locks its mysterious gaze upon you it can actually hypnotize you and want to force you to drown yourself um so zorvarax has been desperately trying to swim under the water and choke to death for several rounds uh only viola using her raw strength uh is keeping him above the water keeping his head uh, from dipping down. Um, <laughs> people have been fighting under the water, shooting at it. It's been slur lurking about and slinking about. Uh, at one point, I believe Theor uh, heroically called out to Percival, Where are you, lad? We're de you have to help us fight. Uh, to which Percival said, oh, I, will, I will do my father proud. And jumped into the water with his spear ready and just whiffed it. Just missed by like a good two feet. And as soon as he hit the water, of course, this thing pounced on him and, and tangled him up and wrapped him up. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Actually, the last moment we had in the story was uh, the creature, which currently has Musa D and Percival Untangled, uh, swam further downriver into another nest of seaweed and has taken the stealth action. So it's currently hidden amongst the seaweed, strangling and drowning your friends currently uh and that is where our adventure has officially ended so i know we're gonna have to resolve some some questions about battle things uh but before we do that yes uh uh viola i remembered it doesn't like light because i cast <laughs> something radiant and it was like ah, that's when it ran away uh, that's true. Yes, uh, it likes being underneath that dirty, dark, dank water. Doesn't like to. Doesn't like them bright lights. It's true. Mm -hmm. um, and then, aside from Viola's point about this mysterious creature, do we have any other questions before we sort of figure out where everyone's at and figure out our our new members joining the the combat? Is this thing like half out of water, half underwater, or are we like it's all underwater? Uh, so are we fully submerged? So what's going to be the I know situation? Axis, yeah. Yeah. So what's going to be the situation uh, in terms of battle placement? So there is uh, there's a river. Uh, the mm -hmm. bridge itself is about 30, 60, let's say 90 feet arched across the from either side of the river bank, right? And then you have the river proper flowing underneath it. Currently, um, Theor, Zorvarax, and Viola are in the water. Um, Theor, everyone has now our, our neck up, at least, uh, because Theor broke the water to yell to Percival to help in the fight, and Viola has been wrestling uh, Zorvarax above the water to ensure that uh, he doesn't drown. So they are all above the water. However, um, about... Well, I mean, everyone's going to be slightly different areas, but that's on one side of the river, let's say, in terms of just general distance. That's on one side of the river. The creature, which, of course, has been swimming away from everybody, right... Um, has disappeared into a thicket of seaweed um, and currently has Percival and Musa D entangled is what you know right now. You just you know that he went in that direction and your party members disappeared and they are all, for as, as, as long as you know, completely submerged. The creature is underwater, um, so there's that. Uh, when it comes to Nadara and Gray, so Nadara and Gray um, will say... You know, perhaps maybe you were handling uh, the other scout camp. Uh, you were helping the other uh, soldiers do their scouting mission before you started hearing some commotion upriver and you decided to run back to, to assist your, your fellows. Um, you are going to appear where the party initially appeared, which is on the one side of the, the riverbank right before the bridge. So you're about dead center on either side of the water, right? So... From your perspective, what you can likely see is on your right-hand side, um, you are going to see uh, Viola and Zorvarax thrashing about in the water with Viola desperately looking like she's trying to keep Zorvarax <laughs> from diving down. Um, and Theor, who is, you know, shouting in the general direction of the bridge, a, a broke in the water. But besides that, no sign of Percival, no sign of Musa D., um, you're just seeing a lot of everyone's attention is focused up river and looking quite perplexed and afraid and frightened and scared. Um, so that's kind of like everyone's general battle layout. And we'll, we can get into specifics once we get into battle. Um, do we have any questions beyond that? 
Well, well, Lauren, you're muted. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Amber, you go ahead first, though. Um, I was just going to say, what was the, can you remind me of the name of this sorcerer troop squad we were talking oh, about earlier? Yeah, the, the ones that uh, that fled from the Magisterium, they are known as the yes. Forsaken. Forsaken. And you said we all got, like, some gold. Do we <laughs> know how much that was? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you got, <laughs> yeah, you got it was, some gold. Yeah, um, it was 122. If you weren't here last session, I believe it was 122 total. Per person? Yeah. And I'm not seeing Amber on my end. No, sorry, not to not to like <laughs> disrupt the stream, but like no, you're good. I'm not. I'm seeing you guys respond to her, but she's not in our vision. I, I I see her. Oh, I don't see her she's here. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I got, I think as a. I've actually never had a reaction before as a character. <laughs> I can just say, hey, I'm doing this when something tries to, to do something to me here. Um, it depends. So each reaction is usually worded to a specific um, trigger. So like it'll say like if X happens, you can react um, or okay. you know, there's usually a, uh, uh, an inciting incident which the reaction can go off of. Okay. Um, That's fun. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so, um, yes, Nadara, you were paid for, I mean, you were paid for a lot of things. You were paid for the Null Clause, you were paid for Nuke's Bounty, you were paid for Percival's Delivery, and you were given the upfront for heading to Danareth. So, yeah, y'all y'all made some money uh, last-ish. Um, okay, and so then, in terms of the battle itself, why don't we have um, Nadara and Grey roll initiative, and I'll slot you into where you should be, and then I will sort of re-announce our initiative so we know what's happening. Not a good start. I mean, this doesn't affect anything, but I rolled a one. <laughs> All right, starting off strong. We love to see it. Is that with your initiative bonus? My initiative bonus is zero. Hell yeah. <laughs> Sick. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Amber, uh, I think you needed. Sorry, I think I need to put Zach's cam back in again. Oh, did my thing fall out? I, I was worried about that. Sorry. I had a dime. Ooh, never mind. I take that back. <laughs> uh okay okay now we should uh, know where we need to be the whole stream the whole stream is just that face i mean are we mad about oh, it oh now it went back okay it was it was just that <laughs> face, <Yeah>. like just <laughs> cute <laughs> yeah I, I had to i had to fix everybody i'm taking up. over <laughs> it's a, it's an instagram it's my game, game now <laughs> <laughs> i may be charmed but <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have Gray now, uh, I guess, le uh, following in at a one, and then Nadara, sorry if you announced an, uh, a number. I did not hear it. I'm sorry, I still can't, did not hear still it. Still can't hear it. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. Hey, everyone, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, I'm going to yeah. fill some time. <laughs> uh, my name is Wolf Scott. I'm your host, the Dungeon Master. Uh, you're about to watch our friends... Uh, fight uh, a mysterious water horse and hopefully and not there, die. There we go. I can hear I can you. Hear you. Oh, okay, great. I can hear y'all. Can you nice, hear me? Nice, yes. Amazing. Um, I rolled a natural 20 for my initiative. Oh, um, spicy. I don't know if that means anything for initiative, but plus three is 23. Well, yeah, I was going to say. Yin uh, and yang. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually. Wow, okay. Um <laughs> Well, actually, no. It does. It does help you because uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Musa D also rolled a nat twenty because his initiative is a twenty one. So that would put uh, him before you, uh, or you before him, which is very good. Um, all right. So um, as sort of a preface to the fight, uh, so do we need to resolve anything else besides the initiative before we start into combat? No, I'm feeling good. Um, so. To sort of uh, hopefully alleviate some some stress of managing some uh, disappearing characters as a legendary action. So I'm going to use one of the creature's legendary actions for this. 
Um, let me make a note here. Um, this would be unbeknownst to you all, but for our audience at, at, at home, um, the creature uh, with its tendrils entwining both uh, Musidi and Percival, who are currently drowning. They are currently, uh, he, the creature has ensnared both of their jaws, pried them open, so they are now guzzling lake water at an alarming rate. Um, you can see those tendrils that are that are spiraling around the armors of Musidi and uh, Percival sort of snap off of the creature's body with a uh, with a sort of a sort of a strange gurgling moan um, as the tendrils themselves weave their way into the patch of um, seagrass uh, lining the bottom of the lake and rooting them in place. So the creature has essentially tangled them up and is keeping them safe and fresh um, and is now able to maneuver freely while your friends guzzle seawater. Um, so that's what it's going to do to start the round. We're going to burn one of its legendary actions so it can free itself up and that way we don't have to worry so much. Well, I mean, I guess we should... They're drowning. You don't have to worry about them, but we don't have to we worry. We don't have to worry. Yeah, you actively just manage a lot them. more to worry about, actually. <laughs> well, let me, let just me let them die. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll put it this way. The DM has a lot less to manage on the paper. Let's let's put it that way. Uh, which means the top of the round, Nadara. So Nadara and um, Gray, you burst out. You're, you've been hearing commotion. <laughs> you say, wow, well, save me <laughs> from chat. Well, wow, well, I hope you don't watch. I hope you don't watch yourself die on stream. <laughs> that would be a very, like, existential crisis for you to experience. Uh, the, no. <laughs> well, hey, we'll find out. Uh, Blue wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> Nadara and Gray, you are hearing shouts uh, from Theor upriver. Uh, immediately your instincts snap into into uh, fight or flight mode and you begin running towards the sound of your your friends. Um, you break through the brushland, sort of the, the the large thickets that are growing off of the side of the the riverbank, um, and you can now see. I'll make sure I get my my distance charts all nice. Um, you are now uh, f face front with the bridge. Um, to your right, about 30, 60, 90 feet away, are Zorvarax and Viola struggling against the current. About 60 feet away is Theor looking desperately towards the water where Percival had just heroically jumped in and then never reappeared. Uh, and that is all that you see. So, Nadara, you are first in the initiative. Okay. Um, I guess getting there. We know nothing. That, that's basically where we're at right now. Like, we're coming in blind. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, My hot cut out. Far away is the is the bad guy. Yeah. I mean, you currently don't know since it's hidden. So yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna look at Viola and just be like, Viola, what's going on? What's happening? You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the seawater that she's gurgling right now. <laughs> 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 They're drowning. There's a monster. It's okay. down there. I'm okay. trying to stop him from drowning. We Let me drown. down there. Let me drown. <laughs> Shut uh, up. <laughs> uh, Theor looks at Nadar. We need your blade. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use my full movement to stay on the bank, but run as far towards where Viola pointed. I don't want to get in the water yet. Okay. Uh, uh, and is it an action for me to like, scan the water like i just want to look in and see if i see anything any movement i know you said the monster made like the sound i'm wondering if there's any bubbles that came to the surface like do i hear anything mm -hmm. um it would be <clears throat> unless you have a feature that lets you do like a skill check as a bonus action um yeah. you can make a perception check as an action okay um let me see no, no, no. Honestly, I can't really do much unless I know where it is. So yeah, I'm gonna use my my action to to see if I can see or locate this thing at all. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me a perception check, and we'll see what's up. Okay, cool. Not the greatest, but mm -hmm. let me see what's my perception a little higher. Okay. Um, twelve. 
12. Uh, unfortunately, Nadara, you uh, squint your eyes and you peer at the murky surface of the water, and all you can see is algae and and dank depths. Okay. Um, I think then, can I? So using my full movement to go that way, I went about 30 feet, right? Correct. Okay, cool. Um, I don't see anything. How far or close am I to the person closest to where Viola pointed to where the thing was? Um, that would be Theor's the one who's furthest uh, downriver. And for you right now, so he's in the water. Um, so you yep. would, you know, have to kind of get deal with that. But about uh, 60 odd feet. 60 feet. Okay. Can I use my bonus action to dash um, further yeah. in, in that direction? Yeah, that'll get you That'll get you another uh, 30 feet. Okay, uh, cool. Do Do you want to, so... The way that Theor is currently positioned, he is yeah. under the the curve of the bridge currently. Okay. Um, so by thirty feet of movement where you currently are, you could run thirty feet and you'll still be on top of the bridge. You know, okay. look. So he'll be on the other side of it. Or yeah. if you want to join him in the water, you know, at his side, you could do that as well. So it's your choice whether you want to dive in or or stay on top. Okay, I don't want to go in the water, so I'll <laughs> stay on top. Of the bridge. Okay. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Perfect. All right, uh, Nadara, uh, you peer into the to the side of the river. You don't see any movement or any sort of dark sh looming figures quite yet. Uh, so instinctively, you dash towards the top of the bridge, and you are there now. So you can see clearly on either side on you know the commotion that's happening. Uh, but currently, one side of it still seems pretty stagnant and quiet, almost eerily so, let's say. And the other side is, of course, thrashing with activity. Um, so that was your movement. That was an action, a bonus action. I believe you will be caught up, yes? Yep, that's it. Okay. Um, perfect, perfect, which means uh, Musa D. Uh, so Musa D is currently drowning. Um, <laughs> while drowning... Uh, a creature can survive a number of rounds equal to one plus its constitution modifier before it instantly drops to dying status. Uh, so once again, this is all unbeknownst to you, uh, but Musa D is struggling desperately against the vines as he gasps <gasps> and more water begins to pour into his lungs as he loses a step of the drowning track and slips one step closer towards his inevitable watery grave uh so that is only two checks left now on the drowning track for musa d uh which brings us back to uh zorvarax zorvarax um i just want to make sure that i have your saves e. down right um da -da 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 -da. If the charm creatures wanna... yeah what do i have to do to save to get away from my charmed Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna make eye contact with you, and I'm gonna be like, "You gotta do this." <laughs> <laughs> I Wait. I need you right now. Where, where'd you go, baby? I locked <laughs> you. What happened to you? Ah, uh, it You're must. You're like yourself. It must repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. So, not now, unfortunately. Great. Uh, but I'll tell you what you can do right now. Uh, so Zorvarax, as you're thrashing against uh, Viola's grip and Viola locks eyes, you says, Zorvarax, come on, we need you. Uh, all you see are these uh, ethereal, glowing, glossy orbs. Eyes are completely mystified some by some ethereal force. As Zorvarax, you desperately try to wrestle your way down back into the water. So um, I'm going to say your action is you're going to give me a contested athletics check against Viola oh, to see if fun. you can wrestle... God, you wrestle so your sorry. way back under the water. Oh. I got a 20 non-natural. I, I rolled a 19, and I'm per very, very good at that. So that's a 24. <laughs> a 24? Uh, okay. <laughs> All uh, right. <laughs> Athletics is the thing that Zorvarex does best. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Viola, you are struggling to hold Zorvarax afloat, but he oh. just tilts his head back and lets out a draconic roar into the, uh, into the midday sun as he dunks his head I down under the water, breaks free of your grip. Uh, Zorvarax. You need a horse to water. <laughs> yeah. You, well, <laughs> drown it. <laughs> Actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, maybe like a horse leads you to water. Yeah. And yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Wow! Did we just discover the origin story of that of that saying? Is that what this is from? Um, English language. Yeah. 
So Zorvarax, uh, you'll use your action to boom, bust free of Viola's grip. You will use your action, your movement to to swim as hard cool. as you can to the That's thirty exactly feet. Exactly what Zorvarax wants to do. Yeah, to the Absolutely. bottom of, of the water. Uh, and as you do it, you are going to keep your maw wide open and just begin to. Of course, <laughs> I gotta hydrate. <laughs> I gotta stay hydrated. Uh, start guzzling water. Um, so what is your, um, constitution modifier? So I know how many rounds you can survive before you start drowning to death. Plus two. Plus two. Okay. So you have three rounds on the clock for the drowning trap. And what, and what can I do to break out of said charm now that it's the end of my turn? I would hope. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, hopefully maybe this will all be averted before you have a chance. Yeah. Um, it is a wisdom saving throw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big strong boy, it's good brain. Ooh, ooh, okay, that's a 19. A 19. 18 plus 1. It's it's 19. <laughs> yeah, you needed that <laughs> plus 1 to push you over the edge. Uh, Zorvarax, uh, as you are clawing your way, baked penguin... Well, Baked Penguin, I think, just marketed on our chat. Uh, thanks, Baked Penguin. If you cool. are a real person, I hope that you are enjoying the stream. Uh, <laughs> if you are not, thank you anyway, I guess. Uh, Zorvarax, uh, you claw your way uh, towards the bottom of the uh, to the river, and with each paddling of your, your hands and rippling of your muscles, your your senses slowly begin to come back to you, and the, the, the glowing veil is lifted from your eyes, and finally, once you uh, snap back <gasps> to your senses, you now realize that you are staring at the bottom of the riverbed and you your lungs are quickly filling up with water. Was I going directly down? Directly going... down. Oh, man. oh, actually... Was it going towards the anybody else in any... Actually, let me, let, me, let me read the power because it may clarify what direction just so I don't uh, cheat either of us. Either of us out of the truth. If I'm going towards the Kelpie, I want to... You, you know what I mean. You know where <laughs> yeah, I'm Yeah, you want to go you where... You know what I want to I want to be where the Kelpie is. <laughs> I want to slash... I want to be that where Kelpie. Musadi is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Up to the charm creature is incapacitated. Yes, and started trying to hold its breath. Yes. Uh, normally and immediately runs out of breath. The charm creature is not fine. The target must move on its turn towards the creature. Okay. So we'll there say. There you go, baby. So we're yeah. going to say if you're. We're, we're going to use some math. So if you're going down and towards it. Um, so you're probably only 15 feet underneath the water, right? Because it's half okay. of your movement to get down yeah. and half of your movement to get across. Um, but that means you are 15 He's feet. He's not good at math about that. Yeah. Hypothesis, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, yeah. Uh, there's something in there for sure. <laughs> I mean, yes. Zorvarax, he would, he would go down and then over, you know? Yeah. Uh, but at least you are that much closer to the Kelpie uh, with a, with a mouthful of, of river water. Um, so that is going to be Zorvarax's third turn. Zorvarax, you are no longer hypnotized. But I have one one level of drowning oh so that will yes yeah. so uh, once you get a fresh breath of air that track will reset so as long as you stay under the water because you can't gain your breath now oh Monty! yeah monty in the chat give it up oh. give it up for cats in oh. the chat baby big stretch oh monty. big stretch look at that yes um, oh, <laughs> um yeah so um if if you use your movement to break the surface of the water, then you can reset your drowning track. Be oh, more cats in the chat! No! Oh my god, where's my cat? Where's she at? We're fighting in water. They're not gonna be. They're not gonna like, like that at all. Y'all good luck. Um. Yeah. So you'll be able to reset your drowning track once you get fresh air. But for now, okay. you're still drowning. But I'm um, not gonna get more drowning in the meantime. If you next round, another cat. Uh, another cat. Get so all dead. the cats. Get all yes, the cats. Yo. Be a party of cat people. <laughs> yeah, I know. it's an entire party. <laughs> and, and not one. Well, I was gonna say not one Tabaxi in sight, but there is an NPC Tabaxi. <laughs> so I mean, an honorary Tabaxi. Um, so yeah. So um, you will continue to drown next round until you can. But I have. Breathe. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it there. 
Uh, Alright, that brings us to Theor's turn. Uh, so Theor, seeing his nephew disappear under the water and not return, uh, is suddenly, uh, his face goes ghost white. Uh, and there is something within him uh, that is uh, a sort of familial panic and rage um, as he readies himself, uh, tightens his grip on his sword. Don't worry, lad. I'm coming for you. As he, no. uh, <laughs> he's a valiant. He's not going to say no to a they fight. Keep going in the water. <laughs> um, so you see uh, Theor's head dip back under the waves as he jets himself over uh, closer towards where Percival had disappeared. Theor is going to make a, we're going to say, he goes, where he's going to make a perception check because he has to find out where Percy is um, to be able to do anything uh, relatively helpful. Um, I actually don't. Let's see what his perception check is. Uh, okay. No, not terrible. Um, oh, but the roll was bad. Uh, so uh, he ducks under the water, uh, opens his eyes wide, takes a scan for Percival, sees nothing but swaying tangles of, of algae and weed. Uh, and if he could curse under his breath without drowning, he would curse under his breath. Um, oh, I should say, um, cause this would have taken into- I saw Piper behind you. <gasps> should I try and grab her? You think she'll get mad? Chat. <laughs> oh. Piper cameo. Piper cat. Piper cat? <laughs> We, we had three already. What's one more? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. This cat truly... Grab her. Everything that happens oh, no, to she's us... She's like, like, I don't know what it is. Down. Oh, no. Piper, oh my uh, god. Oh, we have a new chatter. <laughs> baby Katata. Baby Katate said, oh god, grab her. Well, I grabbed her. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she was she was over that the moment it started uh but other than that uh and now i have a face full of cat hair <laughs> hip, 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 hip. um first problem is to have whoa oh baby katate katie katate uh just just uh so, so follow thank you so much if if you hey uh i can't see all the the new friends in uh, on chat if you're here but we're really close to that 100 follower goal we're sitting at like 92 right now so help us out we love you we'll give you we kisses. should pay bake we should pay baked penguin for their, for their <laughs> chat <laughs> yeah for their chat yeah <laughs> Baked penguin if you're still in chat uh i'm not gonna lie in that in that uh there should be a grab a cat <laughs> action oh my god I'm oh, that's very All right, scary. I'll program it, but I cannot be held responsible for any scratches that, <laughs> that you gonna, get. We're not going to get through a single incident. Yeah, we're actually, we're going to turn our gonna stream be, into oh, just cats. time to grab a cat. Let's go find him. <laughs> and then like five minutes of them trying to grab said cat. <laughs> uh, also, speaking of which, as I got up to hurriedly grab Piper, I totally lost my pen. So we're going to, we're going to see what happens here. See, that's uh, why we can't have That's why we that. can't do it. Uh, but instead, so, we should lower the price for the, uh, you know, points of inspiration. Right. So we can right. really keep stuff right. rolling. Uh, was that was that a <laughs> subtle hint to chat that you can give points of inspiration? Uh, uh, because you can, chat. You can give everyone here points of inspiration. So Lest if they're, we forget, If folks. they're going to die, which, you know, who knows, maybe. Want to um, save your friends in need? Come on. <laughs> Um, Let's see. Can I give us point of inspiration? Do I have enough points? For the point <laughs> oh of inspiration? my god! <laughs> that's, that's how the system gets Shit. corrupt. Wow! Go down that road. Wow! You give you give a mouse a cookie. You know what I'm saying? You give a mouse a cookie. I would say the only this thing is we what can happens. spend our points on. Yep. The only thing we can spend our points on would be the cat scratch. Yeah, the cat scratches. Then um, we can get a moment to think about what we have to do. <laughs> Uh, Theor attempts his uh, best. I'm gonna take this. <laughs> uh, he attempted a, a, a perception check, but it did not work. But the thing that I'm, I, sh I should announce now, because this would have been effect at last battle, uh, Garrett did use this for Theor, but it's been a while since we met. So if you've forgotten, uh, Theor did use his ability called leadership. Um, so using his, uh, you know, grand presence as a leader of the Valiants, 
Um, he's imbued all the party with his leadership. When the party makes an attack roll or a saving throw, you can roll a d4. Oh, we're... <laughs> Mochi, of course. Thank of course. you, Mochi. Yeah. Mochi. Mochi is going to be the reason why you all survive the stream. Yeah. He's going to be yeah. subtly yeah. adding Game more chart. inspiration into the chat. Um, <laughs> you may you may add a 1d4 to an attack roll or a saving throw because of Theor's presence and leadership. Uh, cool. Unfortunately, that does not apply to his own perception check, which he tried to do and failed. So Percival uh, is still floundering under the waves. Hey, I found my pen. I was sitting on it. Pretty sick. Uh, <laughs> just in time. That's... Um, and so that is going to go next round because Theor can't do anything else. Uh, which brings us to Percival, who Percival will sadly look over uh, to Musa D at his side as they both... Uh, actually... Drown. <laughs> Actually, Percival, Percival's still in the fight here, so Percival oh. could maybe make a maybe make an athletic check to break free. I mean, he he is he is. <laughs> I mean, he will automatically uh, lose a step on his drowning track, unfortunately. So uh, he's now down to one round before he begins uh, dying from drowning because he doesn't have as much constitution. He's a, he's a scrawny. He's a, He's a smart boy. He's not. He's not. He's not uh, a thick boy. Um, but he is going to attempt, and by I say capital A attempt uh, yeah. to uh, break free of his binds. So let me give a roll here. Oh, I don't think Percy. I don't think that's going to be enough. Uh, Did as Percy get Mochi's inspiration though? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'll say, because I'm not a member of the party. If a member of the party wants I will to give sacrifice... one of my inspiration points to Percy. Okay, I'll, I'll accept that. That seems like 100%. a fair trade. That's a fair mm -hmm. trade. I'll take that. Okay. All right, so uh, you can... <laughs> Percival struggling... Zorvarax Zor loves this little guy. He wants him to succeed. <laughs> oh, I rolled it right into the crease of my... Wow, somehow worse. Uh, so we went from a 7 to a 5, uh, plus a whopping 1. Uh, so Percival will uh, struggle in vain against the vines as more bubbles escape his lips as he sli uh, slips ever closer to his final moments. Um, Viola, uh, it's going to be your turn. Uh, however... Uh, you got a legendary action. Yeah, we're getting towards the we're getting towards the end of the round, so I might as well I might as well use them or else I lose them, baby. Uh, creatures like gonna... sick days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the Kelpie's got some sick days. Yeah, <laughs> has to. to yeah. Oh, John Gray. Whoa! Wait, what? we Thank have a new you. friend. Yes. Yeah. More inspiration. Yes. Thank you, John you Gray. Doing? We love to see new friends in chat. Thank you so much, and I'm glad you're okay, invested. Uh... Don't be sad. We'll make it better. Yeah. Wait, well, John, the point of inspiration. A point. So, so John will have to. John will have to because I think that's only a single point. That. Yeah, John. Who I gets it? Yeah. yeah. Give it to Percy. Give it to Percy, oh, John. Another one. Another one. <laughs> Y'all gotta pick who hey. gets the That's true. That's true. Jean Grey and Baby Katata. Jean Grey and Baby Katata. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I'm saying that name right. I know I'm not. I'm I'm saying it wrong. Um, point of inspiration train. Uh, so once, well, you can let us know who you, which specific party member you pick for that inspiration. Since there, I think there's a command for whole party and single, a single member. Um, yeah. per, uh, Percy. Percy. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Great. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Our I'm, I'm writing it down. Percy's got a point of inspiration. It's all on the paper. Uh, the boy. This this knight Aaron oh, Wilson. Percy. Whoa. Two for, Two for purse. I love how Percy started this game. It's like, I have no idea what's happening. I'm afraid of every single thing that's Isn't ever that, happened. And now Nadar is like, I'm, that's, hey, that's true. Nadar is <laughs> like, I'm going to train you to be a hero. And then he just gets front loaded with inspiration. Uh, yes. We'll see. He's, he's right. got nothing but faith. <laughs> we'll see. All right. So Percy is inspired uh, to the nth degree. Uh, and now let's see here. Um, so. So Percival's turn. Oh, that I was going to resolve the the legendary action. So, mm -hmm. uh, unbeknownst 
to the party since they cannot oh, see. Um, a slithering figure wheels itself through the waterways and encroaches nearer. If you can see, if we could imagine a cinematic camera for a moment, all you can see is like from the Kelpie's eyes slithering through the waterways. And as it breaks through the, the seaweed, all you can see is a lone fear on the other side looking stalwart on on either on either side uh but unfortunately the kelpie does not have enough uh movement to okay. what? oh no oh. wait <laughs> cue jaws theme and then abruptly stop it <laughs> oh it um, actually can't make it to you in time sorry i I, I think he can i think it can get there but i do not think it cannot attack yet so but there we go there's that so it's just lurking. It's lurking. It's getting closer. It's getting hungrier. It's getting angrier. You know, all the good adjectives that you want closer to apply to, to a monster. Who? Uh, or we can't know yet because none of us. Are the perceptive. the party doesn't know, but the cinematic okay. camera, <laughs> the cinematic <laughs> camera has revealed that it's uh, lurching ever closer to Theor. Who? I mean, he's at the front of the party anyway, in the in the yeah. lake. So you could imagine that's where it would have gone. But um, anyway, which brings us now to Viola. Okay, cool. Oh, and I should say oh, to okay. be to be to be wise and and proactive. It's gonna be Viola, then Kelpie, then Gray, and that's end of round. Okay, sorry, I'm writing it down. Um, all right. To be clear, <laughs> I if I put my head under the water, I will not see it unless I use my action to do perception. Is that correct? Correct. The creature is currently stealthed, so until it openly attacks someone and breaks stealth, um, it is un it is not visible unless a, a, a spell or a skill reveals it. Gotcha. Okay, so if I use light as my as on something, mm -hmm. can I also attack? Or is that my action? Is casting light my action? I believe, and don't quote me on this because I'm going to look it up on the internet. I believe Great. that light is an action. I'm just, I'm just trying to see how much I can do. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, that is fair. And I, I love the gumption. Uh, light is an action. Fuck. All right. <laughs> um... <laughs> Why is all, all my spells are the, something that I can see? They're like light spells, but um, I also take that if I put my head under, I also can't see Percy or Musidi. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, the creature, the creature tangled them up in its hiding spot. I I have noted on my sheet that the creature stealth is higher than their their hiding spot because obviously it, they're they're not as stealthy as the creature itself so there is a chance that if you made a perception check i'm just being uh uh forward with this there if you made a perception check high enough you could possibly see percy and musadi but not see the creature uh because it is stealthier right. than than them so last uh last like planning question for me yes if i do a perception check yes can i also have like do i also have another action or is that all of it that's all i can do like i can go under and then do a perception check uh perception check unless you have a class or like a ancestry feature that makes it like a different kind of action it is an action okay heard 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 so i'm gonna make everyone's life a little bit mm -hmm. easier um in and i'm gonna set us up to hopefully attack it next turn because <laughs> I can't see shit. Um, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast light on a spear that I have. Um, or actually, I'm going to cast it on my Warhammer. So I'm going to cast light on my Warhammer, and I'm going to bring it down into the water. Nice. And light, light is going to give us um, a 20-foot radius. Nice, 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 nice. Um, so a 20-foot so... radius around me is going to be light. Um, and currently, Viola, just so you know, you are at the, you're kind of at the back end of the party. You're on the other side of the, the river. So if you want to use your movement to swim mm -hmm. upstream, that'll, that'll start illuminating other parts of the yeah. battlefield. I'm going to get as close as I can to Theor. Got you. 
So swimming 30 feet. Uh, yes, he, he, he did sort of have a lead on you, so he's still, he's still uh, about 60 feet away, but you are illuminating more of the zone. So I will say um, that anyone making a perception check within that 20-foot radius of Vila, um, you can treat your perception check as having advantage since it is illuminating the darkness and will probably give you a better chance of seeing things hidden there. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Viola, you hold your Warhammer. It is imbued with a, with a divine light. <laughs> um, uh, gray, still, uh, still on the side of the, the riverbank, you see just a golden emanation <laughs> uh, fill up the, 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 the river, the riverbed. Um, but yes, yeah, so you move forward. Um, so currently, Viola, with you moving forward, nothing is immediately revealed from your eye, um, but you are slowly creeping forward and making a lot of things more visible for your friends. Um, so that was a movement. That was an action. Do you have anything else for us? Um, I don't think I can do anything, so <laughs> no. That happens. That happens. Um, all right. Kelpie time, baby. Um I was trying to be, like, really tongue-in-cheek about this creature, but, like, ten people have already said Kelpie. So, like, yeah, it's a Kelpie. If you know your mythos, it's a, it's a seaweed water horse. It's spooky. Get scared. Um, okay, so uh, let's take a look at what this thing can do, right? That's always fun. Uh, so the creature sees Theor, uh, and Theor does not see it, uh, which means the creature... Not What's up? I'm sorry. It's just so not always fun. <laughs> um, but that means the creature does have a advantage on its attack roll because it is hidden. Oh, actually. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, huh. Change, change apart. Change apart. Um, the creature knows that its hypnosis has been broken uh, since it is a magical effect and Zorvarax has saved from the hypnosis. So it would know that oh, no. it currently has a hypnosis slot <laughs> available, if you will, a hypnosis slot. Um, so uh, from the seaweed, uh, Theor turns his head just in time to see uh, a gaggle of floating yellow lights begin to glow and swirl uh, as his eyes begin to follow them and trace, uh, and his mind begins to fill with a slow haze. He's going to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh! Can I, can I give all the tokens that give him inspiration? <laughs> uh, you, you don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, because, Hell yeah! Because this knight captain of the Valiants uh, sees, sees those glowing lights uh, and is well prepared to do battle with this beast uh, and is unaffected. Um, I always knew he was smart. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> uh, you, all you see, all you would see is uh, him... Under the water, sort of as gruffly stort, <laughs> as like little bubbles escape from his nose as uh, he resists that effect. Um, so, what can the creature do with it? So, that was its action. It has not moved yet. Um, okay. What it may do then, uh, because it would have revealed itself in that moment using an action to try to hypnotize. So, for a second, the party can all see these glowing golden lights um, and you can begin to see the horse-like shape of the monster uh, differentiated against the seaweed. Um, however, it has a movement left and a cunning action left to hide. So I think that's exactly what it's going to do, especially because now it sees a orb of light in the distance that it definitely does not want to be near. Um, so it's going to move and it is going to make a... Stealth check. Bada bing, bada boom. That is saved. All right, uh, yeah, For the party sees the, the horse-like head rear up from the seaweed, attempt to hypnotize Theor. Theor bravely uh, negates uh, the creature's effect. And then before Theor can swing his mighty blade, the creature disappears into another uh, swirling tendril of seaweed and then disappears into darkness, hides yet again, waiting for its opportune moment to strike. Um, Wait, does Theor get uh, an attack of opportunity, though? 
Um, let me check the creature's range. The creature has a range of ten feet, so it would have been it would have been able to hit him without it being hit back. Um, but good. Thinking. I tried. You tried. I tried. I tried. Um, which means Gray, it's going to be your turn, and then we're going to go back to the top of the round with Nadara. All right, one quick question. In my inventory, I have something that I have. It's called, I, I wrote funny faces. What is that? <laughs> yeah, give us your best one. You put them in your inventory, those, right? On standby. I've been doing it all night. <laughs> um, but do you know what that yes, is? Yes, yes. Um, so if I if I, if I remember, this is the only thing I can think of that would make you write this down. When you killed Nuke the Houndmaster and you rifled through his bag of goodies... Um, you found a stone carving kit and also some crudely carved stone faces. So it looks like Nuke's hobby was stone carving, uh, which you, you uh, ended his life. So he'll never see that particular venture, uh, you know, flourish. But yeah, you have, yeah. You have some carved stone, uh, stone faces. So how far am I from Sydney? You are, since um, Sydney has swam forward, but you're still on the river's edge. You haven't quite joined the fray yet. 60 feet away. Damn it. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to ask. I'm guessing when this creature did his little movement, little Kelpie did his little movement, I didn't see, I can't perceive any water friction, even like with her. I'm just, I have to ask. I'm um, guessing not. Yeah, I mean, uh, you would have seen, so the way the way the action economy works, you would have seen a shadowy figure move in a direction, um, but, uh -huh. but then once it presumably got to a hiding spot, it would have disappeared. So you kind of have a general idea of where it okay. went, but you don't know its current location. Uh, what does John Gray um, say? My brain heard seaweed water horse as seaweed sea horse. So now Kelpies are evil, evil Pokemon to me. I mean, that's, I'm surprised there is not already a, a Pokemon based off of a Kelpie if there isn't already. Basically a water Ponyta. I thought it was going to be a Seahorse Sea Hell. Friggin', friggin' flowers. Friggin' dresses. This is a uh, real bummer. You know what? So <laughs> this thing is at least 90 feet from me. Um, actually would <gasps> be, actually would be, well, presumably a little closer. It disappeared about 60 feet away from your eyesight, so. Okay, okay. I'm gonna fucking wing it. <laughs> I'm going to, it's a cantrip, why not? Why not? I'm gonna do a little frostbite in that direction. Whoa. It's the only ranged attack I can do right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, do, um, do you want to move it all before you do it, or do you want to cast where you're, where you're standing? Um... <laughs> I will go ankle deep into the water. <laughs> if I feel it on my shins, I'm jumping out. I, I'm going to freak out. It's seaweed. It's fucking seaweed. Our friends are dying. In fact, I change into my water shoes first. And go in. <laughs> They're like, you don't want to get scanned in the toes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so you are going to... Okay, so is it around 60 feet on a creature that you can see within range. Ah, come on. <laughs> it's going to be see, some I clear see, water. It's, I we're, we're in it. I it's see not it. that polluted. <laughs> Sydney's light isn't maybe making it a little bit more like yeah. a little hint of a shadow because the light. Uh, she's, she's not quite 20 feet away from you yet. Otherwise, yes. <laughs> So say it, Wolf. Say I don't see him. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. What do what you want me to say? Yeah, you don't, you don't see him. If I got closer, could I see him? If uh, them, I'm sorry, them. <laughs> uh, if you made a perception check that would allow you to see, discern. Oh I my think, god! I think okay, while Zorvarax I... was mind controlled, he got real close with his Kelpie, and he can assure you they use he. They eat him. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a boy kelpie. Yeah. Now I feel I feel secure moving forward. Now okay. Exactly. Um, so I guess I will wade in as deep as I must <laughs> to potentially pass a maybe perception check. Sick. Yeah, uh, you added the right I'll amount of qualifiers. There. Yeah, you added the right amount of qualifiers. You're good. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, you, okay. Make, make a deep. make a perception check. 
Oh, I wasn't expecting a good roll. <laughs> um, 18 plus Ooh. whatever my perception is. Why can't I ever find it? It's been a minute since I've looked at the character sheet. But, uh, okay. I would add the number beside perception, right? Even Correct. if I'm not proficient in it. Correct. Okay, yeah, 21. 21. Um, Gray, uh, Gray you, <laughs> you're ankle deep. <laughs> And then you're like, maybe I'll go a little deeper. And, and then I somehow stick my head. Yeah, yeah, you just, yeah your, your legs are still on the shore, but you just yeah. like... like, like <laughs> I don't around. go fully under. I straight up bend. Yeah. Uh, the and the moment you do, you come literally face to face with the Kelpie. You put your head oh, in the, the water and it is direct. Are you serious? You are. It is breathing down your neck. Why would you do that? I, I did it. This that? is what... Why I, would you say... More than 60 ish feet away. It's a jump and scare. In ankle deep water. I am bugging out. It's right there. Water's my biggest fear. <laughs> Man. It... I fucking punch it. I fucking punch it. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you do it for flavor. <laughs> I fucking punch it for flavor. And then I. Can I. Can I. Whip my head back and stumble back and scream. Hur, hur. <laughs> Yes, uh, you can. Uh, first time chatter says, the, the Greek farmer says, send it with that punch. Oh, <laughs> Just like, it's, it's, like a, it's like a wind up, like an old timey wind up. This is the meanest thing you've ever done. <laughs> uh, no, the meanest thing I've ever done is going to be the, the next sweating. round is going to be oh, what happens no. on the next round. How is it? That is a true horror movie. <laughs> like, okay. So, um, all right. Is, is, is stumbling backwards my action? Uh, well, you you moved and then you you uh, perceived in, so you moved and you action. You have a bonus action left. What was the action? Sorry, moving. The perception check. Uh, I thought that was okay. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, freaking I'm out so, now. So Things scared. have changed. I'm Situations so have escalated. Um. Oh my God! It's right there. <laughs> Um, is it smiling? Is it like, do, do I scare it a little bit? <laughs> no, it like you duck your head under the water and it was like it knew you were there the entire time. Like it was waiting for you to, to dip your head down. Can it? In all seriousness, uh, I would like to create a motion, just uh, like uh, create a uh, commotion just to yeah. draw attention to where it's at. For and sure. then I, oh my God, the only uh, <laughs> bonus action I have is magic stone. <laughs> Or shillelagh, but I can't use either this round, right? Yeah, you would you would either imbue the staff or enchant the stones this round in anticipation for what is to come. Oh my god, I cannot believe I just sacrificed myself so everyone knows. <laughs> um, freaking out. Um, you know what? I shit my pants. That's my turn. <laughs> That's my bonus action. Nice. Uh, there is <laughs> on brand. There's a couple of bubbles that float up from the water right behind Gray's loincloth. <laughs> oh man, does that scare it away? Uh, it actually seems <laughs> strangely into it. Uh, uh, it like yeah, yeah. it like it like slips a little Dude, bit. This was some. It was a sick fuck. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I will give you this though, because I did say that a perception a perception check high enough to spot the kelpie should also be high enough to spot the entangled friends. So okay. So you, I mean, directly in front of you, you stick your head out of the water. There's kelpie. Uh, Charlie's angel. <laughs> I get it. You said that. Yeah. Uh, but beyond <laughs> it, behind it, in the in the patchwork of uh, of seaweed that it retreated from which from your position is about 30 feet away, right? Um, you do see the two shadowy figures of Musidi and Percy struggling against their, their ropey binds in the water. Okay, can I, damn it, can a bonus action be I throw a pebble to where I see them so everyone else sees where they're at? No, you, got, you, you can enchant the stone. <laughs> no, You can sorry. enchant that stone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess I, uh, no, if I'm this close, I'm going to do shillelagh. Okay, all right, so you. Shillelagh, am I saying that right? I think shillelagh, but I mean, you know, maybe yeah. shillelagh. Shil shillelagh. Maybe yeah, your shillelagh's that, name is shillelagh. Right? <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, you, that gives me a little melee bonus, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you enchant your, your quarterstaff with some primal magic. Uh, okay. For, for a good thwacking. 
You know what? I still point to where they're at. You can't fucking stop me. I point to where they're at. <laughs> she said it. The DM can't stop her. So just, uh, <laughs> she pointed. <laughs> no, it's true. You can use a free action to do that for sure. Um, okay, so so uh, so you just watch uh, Gray freak out, splash around. I think <laughs> by her own description, do a little toot. Uh, at that point, no, I pooped. <laughs> And, uh, and you all are now beginning to uh, get an, uh, an idea of where this Kelpie and where your friends may be. Which brings us back to the top of the round for Nadara. So it's going to be Nadara, Musa D, Zorbarax are the next three on deck. Keep that in your brain. Pans, Nadara. Fantastic. Um, how far is uh, Gray and Kelpie from me you, on the bridge? They are uh, 60 feet. Um, you're on top of the bridge, so 60 feet down. Okay, 60 feet down. Like, so they're just, like, directly underneath me? Um, they're, they're a little bit of an angle. But, I mean, you're, the, the bridge is tall enough that if you get to the one side of it, you should have an unobstructed view. Okay, cool. I'm going to... Actually, please don't. One question before I do this. Um, my crossbow, is yeah. it shooting at a disadvantage since the target is underwater? Ooh. Um, let me double check. There are certain weapons that do and do not qualify for disadvantage when firing underwater, underwater fighting. Light crossbows, to be specific. Crossbows, nets, and thrown weapon attacks are not affected by the underwater restriction. So you are good on that. It's a good thing I decided to write all those notes down before the underwater fight. Hey. Uh, amazing. So I'm going to knock my crossbow and i'm going to point and aim i'm gonna shoot at kelpie all right from atop the ridge um and do we get a one extra d4 on attack rolls right correct because of uh you are imbued with uh bravery from theor's presence that is that hit or is that for damage uh double checking i want to say it is just hit um, attack rolls and saving throws. Okay. So, let me see. Oh, I mean, not need it. Let me see. Um, uh, that's going to be a 17 to hit. Ooh, 17. Yeah, I mean, this Kelpie is made of presumably a lot of kelp which uh famously is not resistant to crossbow bolts so uh yes uh nadara you line up your your shot you release the winch as it sails through the air plucks underneath the water um and you can gray uh you see a full frontal uh shot of the the kelpie sort of take the bolt to the side of the neck and recoil full frontal from, shot hell yeah from the, from the side oh i see a chat um let me see how much damage do i do Oh, and um, Gray is within five feet of the enemy, which I believe uh, qualifies you for sneak attack. Oh, it does it! Amazing! Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, that is an extra uh, 1d6, right? Both ways. Amazing. So it I just up on Gray, and now she's you know. sneaking up on it. <laughs> um, reverse, reverse! <laughs> reverse, reverse! We love this. Uh, okay. <laughs> And then 1d6 for sneak attack. Oh, that's going to be 16 points of damage. 16? Yes, I wrote an 8 plus 3 plus a 5. Um, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm taking notes, and then I just got a question in chat. So uh, 16 points of damage. Mm. Let me write that down. Um, uh, Gray, you watch uh, f f full front as the creature takes the bolt into the neck. Uh, something akin to not quite blood, but almost like an inky substance leaks out of the wound and sort of sprays upward. And uh, Nadara, from your angle, um, you can see it rise to the top of the water and begin to spread above where the, the Kelpie would rest underneath the waves. That is a sure shot. The creature is still in fighting condition, but that was a nasty chunk of its health. And you can see some of the, um, the kelp that is sort of trying to hold itself together is beginning to unbind and break at the sight of impact from the crossbow. <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, and yes, uh, Baby Katate, we play every Wednesday should be uh, our live stream, which you're seeing right now. 
Also, tune in on other random days where I do other TTRPG and uh, D&D stuff. It's kind of random, but I'm, I'm here uh, alone doing stuff, too. Love to have you. Um, can I do something crazy? Um, I would love it if you did. I, okay, so my first question to you is, yes. you know I have double daggers, right? Oh, I, I have you got those double daggers. <laughs> I double daggers. Um, I have a free offhand attack with one of my daggers. Can I use my crossbow and my offhand free offhand? If I, I'm not mistaken, to get the offhand on the dagger, you have to be dual wielding at the beginning of your turn. Right. Um, okay. So yes. Okay, so I should say no. Yeah. So no. Um, that's fine. What else do I have? Sid Fisher says we should do an MTG stream. That would be kind of sick. I don't know how we'd make that work. There's probably a program out there where you could just like build a build a deck and stream it. I bet for free. Maybe. Or we could just, set or just like a set up a camera up over a table. Yeah. Above. Oh yeah. yeah. Aerial view. Um, Warning to I'm... everyone who wants to tune into that. I'm not that good, but I do like it. <laughs> it is fun. Um, that's kind of the end. Makes sense. So, uh, so move closer to the edge, fire, and then that all? Yep, that's it. Okay. Um, all right. Whoa, Talid Har, thank you so much for the follow. Hey, we're, we're slowly climbing the way to about 100. Thank you for joining us. I hope you're uh, having a fun time watching them. I want to say get battered by this uh, Kelpie, but they just <laughs> literally took a huge chunk out of it. So we'll see gotcha. where it goes from it's here. It took a huge chunk out of all of us. <laughs> That's real. true. Uh, so maybe the tide has turned. Uh, however, when it comes to the tide turning, we go back to Musa D, um, who is struggling with all of his might uh, against the, the, the Kelpie's grasp uh, as once again slips another round ever closer uh, to, the, uh, to drowning to death. That is one round away from beginning to to slip um zorvarax oh does he get to roll anything that's all i was gonna ask too sorry <sighs> um, also if he's rolling something it doesn't he get advantage because he's close to fior uh if it was a saving throw or whatever. yes but it would be uh, an ability check um mm -hmm. Here's what I'll do. I will give Musa D a roll, but because I don't want to ghost pilot Musa D's character, if he succeeds, I'm going to say that, you know, he manages to crawl himself onto the riverbank and then is otherwise, you know, um, that un makes sense. unable to yeah, be yeah. used because I don't, I don't have his character sheet pulled up right now. I don't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, granted, granted himself inspiration for the roll. Oh my god. Just so chat knows. <laughs> right, right hand is <laughs> right hand is our bard who is right now currently drowning, could not join us tonight, but has joined us from the other side. Uh in hopes that his own character does not drown. That is hilarious. Uh yes, I will I will give inspiration. <laughs> oh my god, is that funny? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, I actually don't know Musa D's, uh, strength, <laughs> strength bonus. Uh, Musa D, what's your strength bonus? Uh, I'm going to try. Do I have your... Plus your five, I would imagine. Yeah, right? Yeah, that, that, that I songster. think it's maybe plus 20. <laughs> yeah, a, a yeah. natural, a natural plus 20. Um, because I rolled, I rolled a pretty decent number, uh, oh. but I don't know if it is quite enough. Oh, I think I might actually have a copy of the sheet right here. I do. You gotta Ooh, have it. okay. So the first roll, the first roll is close, but not quite, Musa D. That was an eleven, all told. I'm gonna roll again. I'm sorry, Musa D. That was a four oh, the no. second time around. Uh, so Musa D, you do valiantly struggle uh, against the vines, but you do not break. <laughs> did yeah. someone give no. the whole party inspiration? Oh, they did. Yeah, but he already used the inspiration Dude. he just granted himself. I can't just give you yeah. infinite no, rules. Someone else, someone else granted the whole party inspiration I, earlier in the chat. Yeah, I had to get can't. out. But you, but you can't use it on more than one roll, the same roll twice. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. You yeah, can't stack yeah. inspiration. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. used to having Lucky as my cleric. Yeah. That I just, okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Musa D. Uh, hey, you got another round? Let's see what happens. Uh, <laughs> roll them dice. Uh, Theor's turn. 
Um, Theor, uh, now completely. Yeah, no, it's Zorvrax. Oh my gosh! Yes, I'm so sorry, Zorvrax. I uh, I had a weird note about you being mesmerized, Thank and it confused you. me. Zorvrax, then Theor. Yes. And even if I was mesmerized, I would still be giving. <laughs> you would still be trying but, to drown yourself. Yeah, but. Because I was actively swimming towards where the creature was yes. at the time of my last turn. Yes. I should be pretty close to the the captives, right? Um, you are. I mean, you're you're still on the other side of the bridge, so you're still a little ways away. Um, you are about sixty feet away from Theor and about ninety feet from the beast. Oh my gosh. Wait, 90 feet from the beast? Yes. Oh, it, it swam away from me to get to the... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I will do... Oh, does swimming... I don't have any... I don't have any special feats about swimming. So is there a different movement? Like, if I do a dash action, could I make it to Theor and Musa D to free them, possibly? If... Oh, man. I know certain creatures have swimming speeds. That is one thing I should have. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what draconic swimming speeds <laughs> are. I apologize. Um, with allies, uh, you can. I just have the dungeon delver feet, which yes. doesn't help. Uh, Unless they're a uh, to, oh, river. while moving, climbing, or swimming, each foot costs one foot extra. So it's essentially like you are swimming with difficult terrain, unless you have okay. a swim speed. Uh, naturally, which I don't think you do, or you could make an athletics check to try and swim against the current. You know I love athletics, but checks. that will be your action. I mean, it a dash would be my action too. They're sixty feet away, no? I guess to get the to yeah to to get the full either which effect. I want to get I want to get to these people okay. as fast as I can. Drowning be damned because <laughs> they're they're closer to dying than me. Yes. So that's going to be, oh, god damn, the dice are loving me tonight. I got a 21 Ooh, for athletic. Okay, so I will say that you can swim your your full your full regular movement. Okay. So that gets you a little so closer. I, I will do that, and it, is it possible to try to free them after using my action to get there? Or is it just like, I, I, I found them. I'm going to try to wrestle them loose, but it might take more than just this turn to do oh, so. Oh, my apologies. You said captives, not not uh, enemies. I was I was putting no. you... So I'm not going for the monster. I'm going for, right. for Musa D and uh, uh, Percy. Yeah, so if, that, if that's the case, they're, they're a little further away than the creature was. You're still on your way there, but it's going to take you another round to swim in to, to cross that gap. Okay. I'll I, I'm that's that's where he wants to go. He wants to free them from bondage. I believe it. Underwater. I believe that. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's I guess that's my turn. I don't think there's anything I can do with a bonus action right now. Okay. Valiantly yeah. swimming against the the tide and and time right now. Uh, all right now time. it is time time to time. Now it is Theor's turn. Uh, so, oh yeah, what would Theor do? He sees Percy. Would he? No, he would pro Yeah, he wouldn't attack the beast. He's gonna. He's gonna. Try he initially to save his boy. jumped in for his boy. Yeah. So he will move. Okay. Uh, Theor crosses. Uh, he can only use one action to free one of the captives. Uh, so sorry, sorry, Musidi, if you're if you're looking at chat. Uh, but he's known one of the captives slightly longer. Uh, as uh, he takes his blade and drags it across the, the vines, which are ensnaring Percival, uh, cutting him free, uh, which that will be his movement, his action. I know that he doesn't have a bonus action, so I'm going to go immediately to Percival's turn. So Percival, now being free, will use uh, the entire movement to swim towards the top of the, the water um, as Nadara... Being that you were at the, the the water's top, you can see Percival's head finally break from the from the the seat. <gasps> oh God! Oh by the device! Oh, it's sort of like gurgling water, spitting a jaws the jaws of life. I've been saved. Um, and that is going to be Viola's turn. Great. Can I? 
I know where the monster is now, though. You right? do, you do know where the monster is, but I'm also realizing that we're getting close to the end of the round, and I have legendary action suspense. So I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt your turn you ever so bitch. slightly, ever so slightly. Hey, if I don't use them, I lose them. Hey, Gray, remember when I said that your life was going to maybe suck in a second? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you as a person. Um, okay. Uh, that is going to be an attack versus Gray. Uh, Gray, you watch as one of the, the writhing tentacles on its body lurches forward out of its equine form, uh, smashes against your hides and furs, and attempts to wrap itself around you. That is going to be a grand total of 21 to hit. Whoo! Oh, no. Yeah, you know that hits. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but I gotta at least, like, you know, say it for, you know. Uh, okay, uh, hits for 21. Uh, I use my funny faces to block. <laughs> it, it tries to bite me, but the the funny faces stop the teeth from Yeah, from fully, me. fully piercing your body. Uh, <laughs> and then it actually has two attacks per round, and unfortunately you are the only uh, target that it has within Vine's reach. Sick. So let me resolve this first. I'm not locked in here with you. <laughs> You're locked, locked in, in here, here with me. me. <laughs> um, wow, a Watchmen reference <laughs> of all things. A cinematic Watchmen reference. You see, we're a variety stream here, folks. We got a lot of uh, collective nerd knowledge. Uh, the, sec like the second roll actually wasn't too, uh, wasn't too great, though. That is going to be a grand total of 10 on the AC. That, that I mean, it matches, so... Ooh. Okay, all right. So the first one hits. Um, however, the creature does not throw its full weight into the strike because it wants to grapple you. And rather unfortunately, uh, the tendril wraps itself around your neck and hooks the side of your jaw and forces your mouth open as you, <gasps> as it pulls you under as you begin to. to <laughs> wow, all right. <laughs> We're learning a lot about Gray tonight. We're learning a <laughs> lot about Gray tonight. Uh, Gray shouts, don't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting my entire life for this. I'm learning something. <laughs> I went on this adventure for new experiences. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Alright, so the first blow, the first punch in essence is pulled because it wants to uh, ensnare you and force the drowning. So that is only going to be five points of damage. However... The second tendril is gonna hit for its full for its full weight, which is nine points of damage. So total fourteen. Okay, I I have, I'm alive. Okay. Okay. Um. So you are you are restrained. You are grappled. Um. And it is going to move. Um. Oh. Wait. Just for shits and giggles. Right. 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 Uh. No. No. <laughs> okay. If I'm grappled, if I'm grappled, it won't do. Okay. Okay. Um, the creature will move away from the bank of the water. So basically, whatever part of gray that you have not seen, it. it yeah, you just get pulled under under. I just the, get dragged. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it will move deeper into the water with gray in tow. Mm. And then, of course, as we, we've seen it do once, we'll see it do it again. Cunning action, hide in the seaweed with Gray uh, beginning to drown her. So, Gray, uh, what is your uh, constitution modifier? Two. Two? You got three rounds before you your lungs fail you. Um, okay. So that was... There's nothing I could have added to my AC. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just the Kelpie. I'm just, kelp <laughs> I'm just kelping around out here. I'm just doing Kelpie stuff. I was uh, reading up on Kelpies, and it says that they drag people into the water with the intent to either drown them or make them their lovers. Are you? Is it possible? <laughs> It's option B. I'm, hey, you roll, me, you roll me a high enough persuasion check, baby. Anything is uh, is bound to happen. Oh my god, I might try this it. Combat. <laughs> yeah, this combat. Am I oh right? no! Oh no! Oh no! I think I think we have to change the rating of our oh, no. stream. We I, just I got think, banned. Yeah, Twitch, I'm Twitch so has sorry. pulled us. Twitch has pulled us. Oh, we can't god. say that on this. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm sweating. I'm actually sweating. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Uh, Gray disappears under the water, uh, begins to gurgle and disappear with the Kelpie. Uh, now, Viola, I'm so sorry. Uh, it is officially your turn since I interrupted it initially. You fucked everything up. I know. That's why I had to do it. That's why I had to do it before you acted. That's why I had to do it. Listen. I wasn't even doing anything either. And then that. Yeah, she wasn't <laughs> doing anything. <laughs> We were all having a great you time done it. trying to kill you. you. Could have done this, like way up further in the order. <laughs> I could have had time to plan. If you did it up further, I wouldn't have been able to get my shot off. <laughs> oh, that's true. See, look, the cosmic checks and balances. <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna fucking get this guy for four D six of radiant damage. Oh, I know, I know that spell. I know what that is. I know what that is. <laughs> but now I can't fucking see it. <laughs> all right. Um, how far away is it? Um, last you saw it, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. uh, it was 30, 60, about 90 feet away. Last you saw it. Yeah, great. That's great. And how far away is Musa D? Because I saw him, <laughs> or I saw where Percy came up, so I know that yes. he's there. Um, actually, yeah, equidistant, but on the other side of the riverbank. So the Kelpie was on one side attacking people where and um, I'm I'm yeah. already right right at him, aren't I? You're you're, okay. you're near there. Yeah. <clears throat> also, by the way, the stream uh, has uh, had at one point twenty one consecutive years. I think that's the most we've ever had. So thank you so much. Hey. For, yeah. Hey. Wow, we are we are so blessed. Thank you. I hope uh, I hope yeah. everyone doesn't die so you can keep watching. <laughs> Yes, that would be great. Yeah, okay. that would be a great way we reach our peak and then <laughs> yeah. gotta restart the over. stream. <laughs> Everyone died. So I am gonna move. Yes. Um on like obviously I still have my, my light. He's she's with me mm -hmm. forever now. Do you wanna do you um, wanna do you wanna do like uh do you wanna just move half your speed against the water or do you wanna try to make an athletic check to move your full speed like uh like Zorbrax did? Oh, I'm gonna do an athletic check, but um I do have a question. So yes. like if I'm heading towards where this monster is since Zorbrax is a road moose be. Um am I passing anyone on the way? Um you would be passing if you're are you heading towards the monster or are you heading towards uh the captives? The the monster um you would you would be passing zorbrax because essentially y'all are, are swimming downstream the same way and then you're gonna split off one towards the the musidi and one towards the creature hey zorbrax what's your ac <laughs> 16 okay also right, i should so say we're... i mean I, I don't know what you're planning but depending on if it's like a special spell or or something you technically would mm -hmm. also be passing Nadara, but Nadara is also on top of the bridge. I have to touch them. Oh, okay. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> oh, no, I don't. Oh? Oh. No, I don't. The plot thickens. Okay. Um, it's something... Uh, who is within 60... Is everyone within 60 feet of me that I can see? What about Theor? Where is he? Theor's within 60 feet, um, as is Zorbarax and Nadara. Who is who looks the weakest that oh, I can probably see? Probably Percy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Can I? Um, can you see me? <clears throat> a young boy. <laughs> no. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Gray, you are. I can't see Gray. Um, who can I? Can I? I know Percy looks the weakest, but Percy also has two points of inspiration. Um, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> out of the Nadara and Theor, who is who is the weak? The weaker of the two that I need. I'm out of the water and I have not been touched. Yeah, Theo, I mean, Theo I... has a lot of armor, so he's been shrugging off a lot of hits, but he is obviously tangoing with the beast in the in the waves. Yeah, so he's closer to the beast, right? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm gonna uh, cast Shield of Faith on him. Okay. Um, and so that it gives him a plus two to his AC. Ooh. We all know that you're casting Shield of Faith on him because of the picture that. Wolfman, <laughs> the, the, the daddy, daddy. daddy, yeah. Um, I'm not, <laughs> not gonna pretend like Viola does 
doesn't think that he's attractive. We're not even <laughs> oh, a man, man in no, like, uniform. We're, we're not lying around. We're <laughs> all open, you know? I am a woman of faith. We, <laughs> I will not lie. I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I got to say, uh, the, the fight with the Kelpie in the river was not the moment I thought the party would have their collective sexual awakening. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> uh, who, who am I? I'm just the storyteller, you know? Uh, okay, so, okay, so Shield I of Faith. Athletics. Oh, yeah. Shield of Faith, blah, blah, blah. And then I rolled Athletics 22. So. 22. Okay, so you can move uh, your full speed. Yeah. I doggy paddle real hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I will say, Viola, my, I'm going to make a note yeah. here, but you may also want to remember because I may forget. So Shield of Faith is a concentration spell. So you cannot cast mm -hmm. another concentration spell without canceling Shield. And also, um, if you suffer damage while under its effects, there may be a chance that the damage breaks you out of your your focus. So I'll make a note here, but you know, I got I juggle a lot, so I might forget. But there you go. Um, so you dog. Better remember. <laughs> uh, you shout. What what do you uh, what do you shout? What divine uh, uh, command do you give to Theo as you swim underneath the uh, <laughs> the bridge? I just kind of like. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, a, a resounding uh, echoes throughout the water. Uh, as moments later, uh, you see celestial runes emblazon themselves across Theor's breastplate <laughs> as a uh, shimmering uh, light begins to uh, uh, overtake his armor, and you see he is now reinforced by the power of the gods. Shield of Faith is successful. Um, okay, so that is Viola. Now it's time for the Kelpie time. It's the Kelpie's real turn time. It's the Kelpie's real turn time. Okay, so uh, it's got Gray in its clutches. Um, so I think we know what's gonna happen. Um, Gray, there's gonna be two attacks. Uh, the first of which is a 10, and the second of which is way higher than a 10. Uh, it's gonna be 19, 20, 22, 23. By attack, do you mean kiss? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you see, you, it, it puckers up right before the vines uh, <laughs> batter your body. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, the vines begin to constrict you tighter uh, as you feel your muscles give out underneath its grip. Um, so because it is not trying to just drown you, it can fully squeeze away for... It's going to be 18 points of damage. So the first is nine. The second one's nine. I'm dead. <laughs> okay. So that's it. So does the, so how much damage does the first, does the first one knocks you unconscious? Y yeah. Okay. So I'm, I might be over DMing here, but tell me if I'm wrong. You do have the half. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. The, the um, relentless endurance. So I'm down to one. So then the second attack will then in fact, Right. Knock so, yes. Yeah. So instead of directly having one failed death save, yeah, uh, you will be unconscious, but hey, you know, dying, but no death save. Um, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, I was looking at chat and <laughs> I was watching that uh, baby Katate gave uh. the Kelpie inspiration, which I, I I'm, should I keep Ouch. this idea? I know. Uh, there's gonna there's a there's a, a narrative shift happening. Kelpie's now the main character. Uh, <laughs> Lady Katate is chaotic evil. <laughs> He's baby gray. Um, all right, so you um you'll see. So the cre uh, the creature has attacked, which means it is revealed. Uh, sorry, I'm doing some mental math here. So it is revealed. So the party now sees where the creature is. However, the creature will now release Gray. Because there's really no reason to keep uh, squeezing the life out of Gray. So you will see Gray begin to float to the top of the river, but the party sees her face down, back up, gurgling water. Um, she's very clearly unconscious and beginning to drown. Um, and the creature still has an action and a bonus action left. Um, so. Wait, how many actions does this thing have? He just attacked her twice. So, yeah. technically totally. speaking, the creature has multi-attack, which is its attack action, which it can do twice, and then it has a move and a bonus action. <laughs> so sorry. Um, <laughs> but the creature will release um, Gray, and then, uh, once again, cunning action hide, and then uh, you're going to see it slither in the direction, cinematic camera style, 
of uh, Theor and Musadi as Theor is looking towards uh, readying his sword towards Musadi's vines. Um, but they do not see it approaching as the Kelpie lurches ever closer. Um, Gray, it's going to be your turn, so you will need to give me a death save. What do I add to it? Anything? Nothing. Just flat. 13. 13. Okay, so that's one success. So you see the bubble still struggling against the water. Gray's lungs have not fully given up on her yet. Back to the top of the round. Nadara, Musa D. Mm. Zorvarax. Okay. Um, so I wonder, from my like bird's eye view, since I'm higher, right, mm -hmm. do I see the shadow move? Uh, once again, you would have seen it move in the direction of where Percy has now risen up out of the water, but then yeah. it would have disappeared when it got closer because it makes the stealth check at the like end of its turn. So you yeah. kind of have an idea of where it's going, but you don't know where it currently is. Okay. And, and is it within 20 feet of me because of my light? Not quite yet. You're getting nearer. Fuck! <laughs> um... Do I see Musadi? Uh, any? Uh, how close am I to Musadi and Floating Gray? Um, you are thirty feet from Floating Gray. If you, you know, jump off of the the the, br the bridge, and you are about sixty feet away from the gaggle of people trying to get free from the the seaweed vines. Okay. To give credit, I have to go into the water. Uh, <laughs> everyone's getting their feet wet tonight. Not me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> um, but I might have to. I'm trying to figure out what I can do. Uh, okay, so I know the direction in which this monster went. Yes. Okay. Is there a world in which <laughs> I can... <laughs> um, is there a world in which... Okay, wait. My first question is... Yes. Dance How far can I push those orbs out? Ooh interesting question um wow i'd kind of totally forgotten that you even knew dancing lights but your your ancestry gives you that power um okay let me take a look at the dancing light spell i'm gonna look at it right now thanks internet um it's a concentration spell up to one minute it is an action to cast the range is 120 feet you can choose four points within that range to manifest the lights um so i can, can have four orbs you can have four orbs it says you can also at your option you can combine the four orbs into one vaguely glowing humanoid shape of medium size whichever oh, whichever form you choose however each light shims a sh shim sh sheds dim sheds dim light in a 10 foot radius and then as a bonus action you can move the lights 60 feet oh okay Oh, also, all, <laughs> also an interesting addendum to the spell that I just learned right now in reading its description. Um, you can move the them 20 feet. However, a light must be within 20 feet of another light or else it winks out if it exceeds the range. So essentially, okay. you can cast four within 20 feet of each other, 120 feet away. Okay. And that would just be my action. If I wanted to move it further, I'd have to use my bonus action. Correct. Okay, cool. Um, shit. <laughs> that helped, but didn't at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to try this. I'm going to cast Dancing Lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I want, since I'm on a bridge and the river is like running parallel underneath me, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I want to cast two orbs uh, in front of me, two orbs behind me. Mm -hmm. um, actually, yeah. And I want to send them like slowly through the water to see if we can catch a glimpse of this thing anywhere. Okay, uh, so you're sending it down towards the uh, where you yep. saw the creature disappear. Okay, yep. so if that's the case, what I will do, everyone give me their passive perception check. So that would be your perception check plus 10. That is just like what your score normally is if you're not rolling for... Actually, sorry, give me your passive perception check. So it's 10 plus your perception plus... Five, since I said you would have advantage from the light. So okay. roughly advantage equals a plus five bonus. Okay. So if our passive perception, like minus 13, right? Mm -hmm. I would add 10 to that? You would add 
No, just, five, just the five. five. Yeah, yeah, just the five. Okay, so mine would be 18. 18. Same with me. 20. 18, 20. Grace, and conscious. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't need uh, it for me, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, the creature's really stealthy. Um, you 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 are seeing more of the area, absolutely, but it, because it, it naturally camouflages with the sea of, of kelp, uh, you can't tell its form out from You're the... telling me it did better than a 20? Y yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Level two, baby! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, what level is that monster? <laughs> but I will say that if you, now that the lights are there, should you make a perception check, um, an active one, you will have advantage. So instead of taking just the 10, you know, you'd be able to roll twice and take higher. So that could potentially put your perception check higher than what the the passive would be. Me. Oh, any, any, anyone who's in the water. Yeah, anyone who's in the water. So not me since I'm on the bridge. Uh, no, it would, it would apply to you as well. Yeah, yeah. But that would take my action that I already used to do. Correct, okay. correct. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I don't think I can do much else. Um, we saw Percy enter in the water. We saw Gray float away. Nah, I think I'm at my turn. I think that's all I can do. Oh, actually, can I use my bonus action to continue moving my lights? Yeah. Like, what, 60 feet or something like that? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, I don't know. So, <laughs> just just move them around there. I'm just trying to just search. Also, out of curiosity, what do your lights look like when you manifest them? What form do they take? I'm curious. Um, I think my lights are going to be like a faint red glow, um, and they just look kind of like. Um, just kind of like these orbs that have like a like a, maybe a cloudy effect around them, but they like emanate this, this red light, this soft red light. Cloudy blood red light. I love it. Yeah. Very very fitting for for our uh, our drow rogue. Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, so Nadara's uh, illuminated the space. So just once again, everybody who wants to make perception checks to try to find the creature has advantage. Um, but speaking of things that need to uh, have situations hmm. happen. Uh, Musa D uh, has finally hit the round zero of drowning. Um, so uh, he's officially beginning to drown. So I have to roll a death saving throw for our boy. A success. So hey. hey. Uh, <laughs> so let me, <laughs> I'm waiting to see the chat <laughs> explode over there. Uh, so Musa D. You're still dying, but at least you're not actively dying right now. Um, so anyone who is near the captive, so at this point, Theor, um, Zorbrax is getting close. Uh, you can see that Musidi was struggling, struggling. Uh, bubbles were escaping from his mouth. And then finally you see the eyes kind of roll in the back of his head. And all resistance and stress leaves his body. And he's idly sort of bobbing back and forth in the water, only anchored by the, the vines rooting him in place. Mm. Um, and speaking of Zorvarax, it is your turn. So I'm going to try to free Musa D and okay. get him up to the surface so he is not a dead boy. <laughs> um, what would that require? Can I, would I use an athletics check? Would I attack the vines? What would you, what would be the best? Um, I would say an athletics check would probably be the best bet. I'm not arguing with that. <laughs> Ooh, not as good of a roll this time. Would a an eleven work to free 11 him? Eleven is just gonna. But be you have inspiration. Right? I've got plenty of inspiration. <laughs> yes! I'll use one for that. Oh, that still only is an eight. A uh, seventeen though. Oh, 17. Okay. Well, yeah. you rolled an eight and got a seventeen. Holy. No, I no, I rolled a. I I was gonna say eighteen, but oh, no. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so yes, at first you're tugging at the vines, uh, and you're struggling. However, seeing your friend in such peril inspires you to the uh, the ultimate level I'm, of your strength. You just I, my bank is running low on these inspirations. <laughs> he, he says to chat, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, <laughs> as your as your clawed hands psh, tear open the vines as they're shredded in twain. Uh, and it allows Musidi to slowly begin to start bobbing freely, floating up towards the uh, the water's edge. 
And I I imagine I use my movement to get there. Mm -hmm. And I use my action to free him. Can I use my bonus action in any way to get him further up? Mm. Like a throw? I think I think that would be an athletic check, which would be an action. Uh, okay. Um, I don't think there's really anything else I can do with my bonus action because uh, Theor well, already grabbed Percy, so they're they're on their way to freedom. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So he. Uh. Yeah. He cut up. Um. So he's. I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Theor's gonna come back down in a moment. So. You could. You in could. A you could signal to him that Musidi's free. I'll do that. Okay. Go up. Like, let's <laughs> feast. I got Musa D. All right. So that means I'll, I'll make these, I'll make these turns quick because we have, well, actually, right hand Mookie's used. <laughs> uh, Musa D just dumped a bunch of, uh, of cheers into the chat said, let's go blue, uh, for, for rescuing, for saving his life. Round of applause for Musa D. You know, I got you, man. And you blue. know, I got you. <laughs> Um, okay, so yes, uh, oh man, okay, I, I got it though, I'm sorry, I gotta no! be, I gotta I get be, any more legendary action. I gotta be evil, I gotta be, okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Per, uh, I would rather you use them now, use the, them now, not later. Theor, uh, you, uh, pushes, sort of, uh, puts his hand on his back, pushes Percival towards the, uh, the water line, right, uh, and then dips back down. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. makes eye contact with you. You sort of soundlessly, wordlessly uh, communicate. <laughs> uh, Kara Sabinko says, "Oh, my finger slipped." Whole party gets inspiration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Fi your finger's heavy on that trigger. I see ya. Um, uh, makes eye contact with Zorvarax, and you sort of wordlessly communicate that uh, Musidi is free. Uh, Theor gives you a stalwart nod and begins to uh, push himself uh, towards the water. Uh, however, as, uh, as he's pushing himself downward, uh, Zorvarax, you begin to feel a, a familiar, unsettling presence behind you. Uh, oh, cat, cat on, cat on screen. Yeah. Um, oh, an no. unsettling presence an behind unsettling you. Cat yeah, here comes cat. <laughs> we just got inspiration again. I, yeah. I oh yeah, you did. Yes, we did. Oh. Um, okay. Make sure I'm keeping track of my legendary action spent. Um, Revealing itself, the creature has to reveal itself, of course, to do this. Uh, there is a, uh, a, a faintly glowing golden light from behind your head, Zorvarax, and as you slowly turn your head to see what is behind you, you are once again met face to face with the creature <laughs> as its mystifying gaze begins How to penetrate so your mind. How is it so freaking fast? Don't look! Um, wisdom saving? Wisdom saving throw. And do I get inspiration on this because of Theor's leadership? You get, okay, so right now you have your regular roll plus 1d4 is the leadership. Thank plus you. if you need to burn it, you can use an inspiration to that, uh, that you were just granted. <laughs> I, I can still do that again even yeah. though I just use it. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's going to be, ooh, I don't think I'm going to need that. That's a 19 plus, sorry, my d4 is dark. Oh, that's a, a non-natural 20, and I'm not a wise guy, but I think that a non-natural <laughs> 20 is probably guy. enough. Uh, that is a 21. Success. Um, and and just to just to get this out of the not way for... Not today, Satan, <laughs> I say. Only it's like... <laughs> rum, 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 rum. <laughs> uh... Feeling that its uh, majestic presence has been resisted in anger, it lashes out with a tentacle shoo, as I actually smack my headphone uh, wire into the screen. Um, 21 to hit. Of course that hits. Okay. Um, once again, it's going to pull the punch so that it can grapple you and force your jaw open. Um, so you're only going to take five points of damage. Oh, thank you. That's but so nice. the creature is entirely visible to the party because it could not use another action yet to hide. So it is currently um, visible, but it does have Zorvarax wrapped up and beginning to drown. Um, but I'm still, I'm still breathing. All right, well, I'm still alive. Yes. I'm not dead yet. Um, so Theor went down, had his turn interrupted by the creature. So I guess he can... 
attack it now, which he will attack. Would he have not gotten an attack of opportunity while the creature went by him to get to me? It, did, it didn't have to go by him. It has a 10-foot reach. It's got those tentacles, baby. Got the long reach. Um, but that hentai life. <laughs> This stream really is going to be is going to be black. I you I'm not, I'm going to be banned on this stream. <laughs> no, y'all uh, can stream, but that one guy can't yeah. anymore. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah, get that guy off of here. If anybody in chat really likes D and D and wants to play a dragonborn fighter, uh, hit us up at level one adventure. Uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm teasing. Oh no. Uh, okay. Theor is gonna. I mean, at this point, Theor is just needs to needs to make up for some lost time on these attacks. Uh, unfortunately, the first one, uh, because of disadvantage, trying to actually, he does have a dagger, so he would be smart enough to know this. He would probably stow his sword to pull out his dagger. Um, so let's see. Okay, still though, the first uh, the first blow goes a little uh, short as it's trying to cut through the water. The creature is way too accustomed to fighting in such an environment to be impeded by the blow. However, the second one does catch. Um, mm -hmm. As you see, I'm only here for the dirty talks emoji. What has this stream become? I'm just trying to have a wholesome adventure with my friends, fight, fight some monsters, Wait. get some gold. A wholesome adventure. Oh my god! <laughs> I I don't know what to do. Um, uh, but does strike true on the second blow, so that would be. Uh, I mean, it's a dagger. It's not amazing damage, but it is damage on the beast. Um, so it manages to cut free some of the vines on its body. You see more inky blood spurt out of the wound. Um, at this point, Percival just crawls himself onto, um, the shoreline and immediately breaks for the brush, hunkers down and makes a stealth check. <laughs> uh, you see him, uh, shivering, uh, clutching his knees, rocking back and forth. <sighs> it's all, it's all going to be okay. Just, just breathe, Percy. Just breathe. Just breathe. Uh, cold sweat on his brow. Viola, it is now your turn. Thank God. All right. So, how far away is Gray from me? Gray is uh, 30 feet away. Oh, great. Um, that's as an action. So, what? And when I get to Gray, so, like, say I can get all the way to Gray, the uh, the big bad, I can still see him, obviously. Yes. Because he's, he's visible. Um, He's within 120 feet at that point? Yes. Great. So, first off, I'm going to swim to Gray just so I can be there. Um, that's a natural 20. Okay. Um, so, I swim to Gray. Beautiful. And then I'm going to look at this bitch. And I am going to point at it um, and grab my holy sigil with my other hand. And I am going to cast Guiding Bolt. Ooh, okay. I knew this was coming. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. I hope I didn't burn Re it. Remember, you get a D4 on top of your Ye roll. Yeah, well, I'm going to use inspiration immediately, just so y'all know. That is just going to happen. I rolled a two. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and burn that. Okay, so that's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 to hit. Ooh, that is a clean, clean hit. All right. A bolt of divine energy erupts from uh, Viola's holy symbol uh, to Tetrios. Psh, the, the, the golden ringed crown of electricity are hanging oh, around her neck. Oh. Oh. Also, I'm so sorry. I want to go ahead and use my channel divinity. And so because this is a, um, this is a light, this lightning damage, I'm going to go ahead and just t have it take the full. It is radiant days. damage. Oh, it's radiant. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Although I love the enthusiasm. Yeah, no, your head was in the right place. Your head was definitely in the right place. But, uh, okay, so you, you, you strike true uh, as a bolt of divine energy ratchets forth from your holy symbol and strikes the beast dead on. How much damage do you deal with this? Let's see. Five. Five, ten. Fifteen. <laughs> 
He's 17. Let's go. Okay. That time when the healer does a lot more damage <laughs> fighter in a fight. Okay. Um, the the ray of holy energy erupts from the holy sigil, scorches the 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 kelp hide of this the the flank of the creature. Oh, I see. I see a hand raised. It's also if it didn't kill it, it's glowing for the next turn. Yes. Yes. So you can mm -hmm. see um, it almost creates whenever, wherever the blow, the, 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 the light of this uh, strike hits the beast, the impact actually forms the celestial rune, the impact of Tetrios across its hide. Uh, and that like burned symbol is now emanating with a, uh, with a holy light, which is pretty much creating a giant target saying, hit here as hard as you can. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, that spell gives the next hit on the target advantage. That's so, correct. Um, so that means it is the Kelpie's turn. Um, and it is branded and it is glowing with light and it senses that it is very near death. Um, so let me take a look at my sheet real quick. <laughs> um, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> um, ba -ba -ba -ba. what do I have on my sheet? I know I have something for this moment. Yes, I do. Uh, and then I'm going to look and I'm going to type something into Google to make sure that I'm not lying to anybody, including myself. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so the creature branded by Byla is going to do a couple of things. It is going to, whew, okay. First of all, it's gonna release Zorvarax. So Zorvarax, it loosens its grip on you. It then uh, you can see all of that, like the 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 golden lights that are underneath its its kelp like flesh, begin to expand underneath that pool of darkness that it's like its undercoat of flesh until it almost just looks like a golden orb uh, surrounded by uh, like a, a net, a cage of vines, right? And as that expands, it almost sort of um its its horse like form almost bends to shape around the light until it's almost like a complete orb of vines and light and suddenly there's a a flash and it is gone 30 feet away on the shoreline next to percival there is another flash of light as the creature casts misty step teleports you got to be shitting me <laughs> Um, but I don't think, let me double check my notes here. Nadar, you better hit this with your fucking gets an attack of opportunity and he kills this guy. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do, do I let him do it? If he does, he gets advantage. Well, Percy's right there. Kiss him. And that thing is glowing. Okay. In fairness, in fairness. <laughs> The creature doesn't know he's there. He is hidden. So, like, the creature... Because this, this is my logic. The creature could technically take the disengage action to prevent opportunity attacks, but he doesn't know Percy is there, so why would he do it? Um, okay, so the Kelpie becomes an but orb... does Percy have gusto <laughs> to do it? Percy. Percy. Percy, Percy all hears Percy. all this. You know what? You know what? Zorvrax berated him in his... Okay, brain. I will... I will... <laughs> so wrecked. Oh boy's gonna like get it. Uh, so it's to uh, okay. I will say that anyone who is who is on the surface of the water right now, um, Theor, um, is Theor the only one who's on the surface of the water? I mean, I'm floating. But you're also unconscious. I'm saying who, who would see <laughs> who would be able to see Percy and like shout an inspirational. Nadara. Word. Nadara. Nadara. And I'm also not underwater. Okay. Uh, all right. So I will let you two make a uh, a joint, uh, what's the word? Persuasion check. Um, we're going to say because Percival may have something of a crush on Nadara, which she may or may not have stoked in him. 
uh, w- with some some guile, I'll give her uh, give her advantage on this check. All right, cool. Is this gonna be? Wait, what do I roll for? Uh, persuasion. If you're if you're gonna try to persuade Percy to break his his oh, spear. I'm Persuasion. I only got an eleven. Okay. And I would love to see Nadara do this. So okay. if I, I need to use the inspiration, I will. <laughs> do I still roll with advantage? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Take a look at his. Okay. All right. Um. Let me see. Okay. Um. First of all, no. Can I use my point of inspiration? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can. <laughs> okay. First of all, no. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them were under a 10. Um, and I'm not great at this, so one more time. Please. <gasps> okay, so much better. This is going to be a 17. A 17? Okay. Yeah. What do you say to Percival? <laughs> she's going to shout, Percy, if you do the thing, I swell because she's straight on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see him immediately stand up from the brush, spear in hand, just sh- shoots up like a rocket. What? Just like just stri- <laughs> the one motion. Uh, strikes forward, uh, <laughs> rolls with advantage because he's from hiding. Uh, okay, oh, so that is yeah. that is definitely a hit. Uh, okay, <laughs> That's he, has, my boy. he has to roll for damage. Uh, but, but, but we'll say he's two handed <laughs> on the spear. Um, but, 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 but. okay, let me roll. Um. <laughs> sounded like a D4. <laughs> Not rolling uh, the right dice. Yeah. Uh, says, uh, shoots up, what? Anything for you, Natara? <laughs> and like plunges forward. Uh, you see the spear sink into the hind quarter of the, the Kelpie. It rears up, <laughs> pounds its hoofs down. Uh, there's another spurt of black inky blood. It pretty much <laughs> washes over <laughs> Percy's face, just like completely coats him in darkness. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, not okay. enough to kill the beast okay. uh, as it continues to rush away into the brush and then uh, uses then its bonus action to hide. So you see it like you see it it's- still can't. It's still glowing until the end of my next turn, even ah, if it gets it back. OK. All right. Um, so, OK, so then uh, we can. I guess it depends on so if the party still wants hides, to hide it. The brush and then it's still glowing, so there's like a glowing brush over there. Like I, we we all see it's still right there. Well, then actually, yeah, I think the creature would probably know that. So can think it do anything like, so sweet, like a baby? Like, like yeah, playing peekaboo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think then in that case the creature's just gonna dash. Um, so it's just gonna get further away. Um, so basically, you can see this glowing horse with a spear stuck out of its butt, <laughs> running as hard as it can. Uh, Percival just like his hands like frozen where the spear once was, now empty. He's like, that, "That still counts, right? I, I, I did, I did, I did hit it." She uh, yelled back, "I guess that counts for a cheat." <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, Percy's the only one that's gotten any cheeks this whole party, so. Okay, so it's pretty clear the creature's intent. It is trying to fight for its life. It's running away. So if the party... Uh, we'll kind of do a corpse eater moment where if the party wants to try and chase and engage, they can. If not, they can let the, the Kelpie flee. So I'll give I'll give the party their moment to choose. But uh, how please? fast... You're fast, right? Yeah, I, I, I can I also... Let let it. It. So I feel like I can reach it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, because okay. I don't think we should let it flee because it's killed a bunch of people. It's gonna, it's yeah. Gonna okay. come I'm right back. So then that was the Kelpie's turn. So in fairness to to honor the round, uh, <laughs> Gray, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna need your uh, death saving throw. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's three. Two- <laughs> oh wait never mind i thought that was a no problem like good that's a no problem like bad no, you oh are, yeah you no no it. what you said, said at it. the beginning like she said no problem <laughs> <laughs> i said it knowing it was going to be a bad roll i just felt it it was all for comedic effect all right so <laughs> it was all, it was all wait, for the if lull. i'm dead can i get inspiration <laughs> uh sure if you yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. Like, why not uh, yeah, yeah why not 
say be, it's a death save. I don't want to be a bother to anyone. <laughs> I don't want to be a burden. It's a saving throw. I don't even want to be around anymore. <laughs> I don't agree again. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> you see, you see for a moment, you see for a moment, there's like a muscular spasm, like a twitch of effort from Gray, and then just no. more bubbles, just more bubbles. There's right. clearly too much shit on her. All right, so, so Nadara, Nadara, it would be your turn. Um, so, um, uh, the creature, the creature is, uh, blah, 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 blah. I, I think Percy has used the, the advantage on the attack. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think this hit would be a normal hit for you. Yep. Okay. Um, can I, um, how far is the creature from me? Um, let's see. You were on the bridge and then it teleported to here and then mm -hmm. it moved 30, 60 feet. So we're talking 30, 60, 90, cause it can dash. So yeah, 90 okay. feet. Oh, that's not that bad. Okay. Cause I have a lot of range with my crossbow. Okay, I don't need to move. Um, I, I'm just gonna take a shot. Uh, and I'm gonna use my last point of inspiration to give myself advantage. Um, uh, blam! Oh <laughs> shit! Yeah. Yes. And we still have the plus one d4 for the attack. Yeah, roll. you do. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so a first attempt. Oh, wait, that's the wrong dice. Um, d4. Okay. Yeah, nope, I'm gonna roll one more time. Oh, actually, maybe that might hit 16 to hit. I mean, I'll show you. Let me roll just to make sure I don't get a natural 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's even better. Um, actually, it's gonna be a 23 to hit. Um, actually, yeah, 23. <laughs> yeah, 23 to hit absolutely hits. Okay, amazing. Um, so she's just kind of like looking down her side. She's like, come on, come on, come on. Um, <laughs> Um, per, per, all you see is Percy grinning ear to ear, just covered in ink, just like hands still frozen in place, just so pleased with himself. Absolutely, just <laughs> <laughs> completely oblivious that the creature is like stampeding so away. He's done his part. He's contributing. Uh, Zorkrax is so proud of him. <laughs> That's gonna be eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Yeah. Uh, hey, Nadara. How you want to do it? Yes! <laughs> Freaking um, phrase you could ever hear in D&D. How you want to do it. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to, from the top of the bridge, I'm going to say Percy Duck. And I'm <laughs> going to just, like, silently shoot it. And that's it. I don't even want to do a flare. <laughs> uh, uh, you say, you say Percy, <laughs> Percy Duck, and like, like an absolute hinge. He just goes from this to like a ninety degree <laughs> angle, just like, shoop, like immediately following your command. The bolt soars over his head. Uh, the creature like begins to rear back as if like trying to to see if something is behind it, and you just catch it right into where its eye socket would be, piercing out the other side. It doubles forward, like the the imp, like the motion of its own body just crumpling it to the ground. And you can see it with each tumble, it the vines become looser. The kelp bit begins to shred further and further away. And almost like watching, uh, almost like watching a sushi roll, like unwind itself. It gets smaller and smaller until, like, finally <laughs> the mass of its body hits the earth, and it just splays out in a flat pile of leaves and kelp and ink. And you have slain the Kelpie of Perel Channel. Heck this is what y'all yeah. have just done. Oh, boy. So the first thing that I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab Gray's face and just pour a potion <laughs> down her throat. <laughs> <laughs> you get 2d4 plus 2. I'm going to... Thank you. Gonna, I'll ensure Moosey makes it makes his way up to the surface. <laughs> so he ain't dead no more. And I will go over there, and then I'm going to do uh, healing hands on Musa D as well. So everybody is alive. Yeah, the party's like, emergency, emergency, triage, yeah. triage, triage. Triage, quick, yeah. <laughs> um, Nadara's going to, like, 
right over to Percy and gonna like wipe a little section of his cheek off and like do the faintest, tiniest peck on his cheek. Uh, you leave like your lips, like you can see the outline of your lips, like on the the inky blood, like of of his face, revealing the skin underneath, and you can see immediately begins to warm up and like turn flushed pink, and that his glasses like fog up. <sighs> and then. And then Zorvarak, seeing her do that, does the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like you like sandwich oh, Percy's that's face. What you do. It's like like one side is Tatara, one side. <laughs> well, oh, well, that well, okay. Well, you know, thank you, uh, Zorvarak. Uh, that we we did we did discuss it, but I thank you. I thank you. You fought, you fought well. I figured that would be the best way to thank you. Uh, you seem to like it from her. So. <laughs> Uh, to this, uh, Theor, uh, pulling himself onto the banks and, and seeing you all begin to take care of each other, hearing Zorvax says you fought well, uh, gives uh, Percy sort of an up and down, sort of an appraising look for a second. Yes, you did fight well. Good job, son. And you can see uh, Percival, there's a, sort of like all the tension in his body sort of like releases for a moment uh, as uh, Theor, uh, Theor nods his head. You've done your father proud this day. Thank you, Uncle. That means, that means much coming from you. Uh, Theor turns, uh, gives him an approving nod as he turns his gaze to the party. And you lot as well have more than proved your worth. That beast surely would have taken more of the Valiants had it the chance, and you've made sure it has none. We are indebted to you as much as you are indebted to us. Thank you for your time and your strength. You <laughs> know. Wait, how are we in debt? Or a peck on the cheek as well. <laughs> that's just yes. quite, that's exactly quite fine. Like I did for uh, that, uh, well, okay. That's what I think I should do. Is this do. something what you all do then? <laughs> um, mm. I thought that's what I. I Percy, you I have some, have. you've made some I'm very sorry. interesting friends, Percy, is all I have to say. <laughs> Right. Indebted, uh, t turning towards, uh, turning to uh, Viola, indebted at least in terms of your contract. You do mean to follow through with the delivery, I assume. Uh, we're definitely good for our word. I just was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have all earned ourselves a feast and a rest. And by morrow, we should load up these wagons down a wreath awaits. And maybe level yeah. up. <laughs> and he says, <laughs> I, I don't know. What the, <laughs> this is another strange oh, you know term means. you've brought to these lands. <laughs> level up. But yeah, perhaps. You know. <laughs> you know. Um, but with that, I know that uh, I, I know mm -hmm. I have some uh, some friends who desperately need to catch some sleep uh, before mm -hmm. before their jobs creep up on them in the morning. Uh, but second dab. <laughs> but um, I think we're gonna end it there for the night. Uh, thank you so much, everyone who joined yeah. us tonight. There was like yeah. there was like three or four new follows. We had a resubscribe. We had bits in the chat. Crazy active stream. Thank you so much. Uh, Y'all, we love bits in the chat. Uh, we love bits in the chat. Yeah, we had bits in the game and bits in the chat. Uh, Our stream was legal. Like, as as much as it can be. Yeah. Uh, baby, baby Katate did say though uh, the inspiration wasn't enough to. I'm assuming save the Kelpie. I'm assuming Baby <laughs> Katate was uh, rooting for Team Kelpie I'm over sorry. there. Uh, but... I appreciate your gusto. No. <laughs> sorry, not sorry that Kelpie was done for. Was... <laughs> but no. when we next meet, uh, we will have the party. I guess uh, fully discuss what the next uh, leg of their plan with Theor and the rest of the Valiants. And load up the wagons onto the river of Perel Channel. Oh, uh, Sid has redeemed a hydrate, so. Uh, <laughs> hydrate. This, this will be this will be water uh -oh. that you are welcome to have in your bodies. Kara says, uh, "Thank you for the fur baby for I the services. So they they are happy. They're happy to be here. I mean, for the most part, I assume they're happy to be here." Um. <laughs> but yes, uh, we will. Next time we convene, the party will uh, speak their plans for Theor. You will head off to the, the, the inner city, the grand metropolis of Danareth across Perel Channel, and we will see what is next in store. The Kelpie of Perel Channel has been slain. 
Uh, and the realms are just a bit safer, a bit safer on this day. A bit. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please, if you haven't, if you enjoyed what you saw, give us a follow, give us a, a like, a subscribe, all the fun stuff. Uh, follow and subscribe to the YouTube. You can catch up on all the episodes you might have already missed if you enjoyed this uh, colorful cast of characters. There's eight more episodes of them uh, doing cool stuff, and there will be more episodes to come. Um, you can also follow us on our socials. That's where we post updates for new videos, as well as the Discord, where I have a campaign journal, and you can learn all about the lore of the world. Um, and I think that's all the usual things that I am like contractually obligated to say as ending the stream. So, uh, <laughs> my lovely friends and party members, if you have anything you would like to say to our viewers, uh, please, please do. Love you, bye. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, you for all. your help. Yeah. Please don't please don't stop inspiring us. Yeah, yeah. keep keep the inspirations going. Keep ending those points. That's actually incredibly fun playing and having people do that live. That's yeah, so right. That's good. Yeah, and, and yeah, if anybody probably. thinks of any other cool little chat rewards, let me know. I can I can play. Aside in. from things that make it harder for us. Let's not make like oh <laughs> add a mimic into it the mix. Just it fun. should be like Hunger Games where people can send parachutes of items nice. in. The and they no, no, for us, positive though. help. Yeah, oh, that's fun. People can if, be like, like I don't know. I kind of like the idea where it makes things harder. I think I'm <laughs> no, I'm down. <laughs> Sydney, that was you. <laughs> Mine was in the positive brain aspect yep. of Hunger Games. <laughs> no, it was actually Zach said. <laughs> Not uh, actually, <laughs> I did bring it up first that there could be a possibility. Yeah, oh, we had a, another people. another uh, new chatter. Our, uh, I think that our maybe not a new chatter. It doesn't say new chatter, but I don't, our little author. Thank you for joining us. There's all the inspiration in chat. Um, thank you. But yes, thank hey. you so much. Um, we'll see you next time. I'm gonna roll the outro and uh, all the difficulty. I turn coded so fast. <laughs> we will see you next time. Much love. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye. bye. Thank you.